Legends Global Series. It's match day seven, this time in NA, which means it's the last time all of these groups will face off as well before we find out who will qualify through to the regional finals and then who we will see at LAN in playoffs. It's also the first time we get to see what Group A brings to the table now in this new season 20 meta. And with what we saw out of EMEA earlier, I can't wait to see what NA has in store for us. There's so much to talk about. So let's just start. I'm your host, Glitter Explosion. And today, I'm excited to bring back Vicky and Gino. Vicky, NA started off strong yesterday in this new meta. So you excited to see Group A? Oh, yeah, and I can't wait. It's been, what, forever for what it seems like to me since the last time I've been able to cover NA. And I'm so happy to be back alongside you and Gino, who we haven't seen on a broadcast yet covering NA, so that's going to be super exciting. What new changes that this new season has brought for us, and what else is NA going to do to stay on top? That's the question here, Litter. I mean, they've got a lot of pressure on their shoulders, but like Vicky said, for the first time in NA as well, we get the legend Genome joining us. I wish I could have heard you during that moist DZ fight that we saw yesterday in NA. Ah, uh, look, I popped off just watching it on Twitter. You know, it was, uh, it was a fantastic time. And yeah, look, the Apex South takeover continues. Uh, we're doing it on the, the leaderboard, and now I'm here to do it in the casting booth as well. It's going to be a really exciting day, and we saw just how impactful this match day specifically can be for some of our teams when it came to EMEA, and now our NA squads have that same pressure on their shoulders as well to have a good performance and set themselves up as well as possible, possible to qualify through to the next stage of the competition. So we'll take a look at our overall standings so far, start to set the stage here for where our teams are. Genome, talk to me about this first page. Yeah, well, just looking up the top there, anyone notice anything in particular? <laughs> just scanning. Uh, number one, number two. Oh, there, Apex South teams. That's crazy. There's so many Australians on this leaderboard. I, I don't know how that happens. I guess we're just really good. Uh, going down there, we do see some actual North American teams. Um, LG been doing pretty well. TSM, never see them out of the conversation, but Elevate are probably the one that have impressed me most uh, in their glow up this season. And then we'll move on to the second page as well here. Vicky, talk to me about some of the names that jump out to you. Disguise being on the cusp. This is always a team that likes to play with my heartstrings. And I don't know the comps that they were running yesterday. I don't know if we're going to see that stick, the race, the fuse. I know there's a lot of change up here, but I want to see more change up from this squad. Even looking at teams like Optic Gaming, Xset, they're going way back in time. I'm looking at comps from 2022 now being played with a double big boy into the Valkyrie meta. It's going to be interesting to see how so many of these other teams try to stay on top top even sentinels i want to call it sentinels because they had some signs of life yesterday that's the one i want to see from a team that has the capability to stay on top they finished in fourth i believe yesterday alone and they had some pretty good games on world's edge and they even won one really big one to end the day yeah, and that's a good shout out to Vicky because NA has 11 spots available, making their way through to playoffs. So DSG being on that cusp is something we'll be keeping our eyes on. But we take a look at the third page here. These teams are in even more danger. Obviously, top 20 making their way through to regional finals. So they at least want to be there looking at meat lovers right in that 21st spot. But then also looking at relegation or bottom eight squads. Okay, so anyone that's in this bubble right now wants to at least push out of that to keep their spot in pro league and continue on in the competition. Otherwise, they'll be facing that PLQ competition later on in the year. So lots of stories that we have to kind of keep our eyes on when it comes to some of these teams, but we'll take a look at what we're calling the state of play. And we talk about this a lot. It's about those magical numbers, those thresholds for how our teams can qualify through to the next stages of competition. Genome, quite a few are already pretty set for playoffs. They are. And I guess the other thing we should note here is that uh, there's more slots in NA, right? You've got 12 slots, uh, 12 teams that are going to land. So the numbers will be a little bit lower, a little bit more forgiving uh, than the ones we saw over in EMEA. So uh, it was 90 for EMEA. Uh, it'll probably be a little bit lower, maybe sort of, you know, maybe 80, mid 80, something like that uh, for North America. And Vicky, of course, we have the middle of the pack looking even closer here in NA since we don't have as big of a spread when it comes to those teams at the top. So it's very close and kind of jumbled together here who could potentially even just make it through to regional finals. 
Yeah, it's crazy to see how close it is in general. And with some of these teams, I mean, all of them, they all have two, two basically match days left to put points on the board with the top 11 teams and the winner of the regional final advancing. It's starting to look grim for the teams that are on the bottom end of the overall standings. They have to literally have the pop-off games of their lives if they want to have any opportunity to compete in land. All right, well, now that we kind of know the lay of the land today, we have groups A and B in our competition. And uh, there's lots of squads that we could be talking about here. Just give me a quick overview of who you might want to be kind of watching out for, keeping your eyes on your genome. Oh, man, so many, aren't there? I mean, SSG is, is certainly one that's tickled my fancy this year. They're up in seventh. Uh, place at the moment. Uh, you know, Phony's style as an IGL has always been quite interesting. Uh, and he's had, had to change it around with uh, Zainu being that new addition to the team who has certainly been buoying them to new heights. Some really solid choices there, Vicky. Give me your thoughts as well. Optic, I want to see the green <laughs> wall come up. We know that they have the potential to do it, but they just have been falling short. Usually around their rotate, they yeah. just have been very unlucky. But I also feel like last season's comps were not working at their strength. Now with perks being added into Apex, season 20 bring a whole new slate of different legends being played. I think this is the opportunity. I mean, better late than never here for the green wall to come up. All right, well, lots of squads for us to talk about, but every time, you know, we want to narrow it down just a little bit into three specific teams that we want to be keeping our eyes on here today. It's time for us to talk about our ones to watch. We've got some great choices on the board here. We've got GKS, DZ, of course, and Eternal EC. Vicky, I want to start with your pick in GKS. Tell me about them. All right, so we talked about how the top 11 teams and the winner of the regional final make it to split one playoffs for land. Well, GKS currently is sitting in number ninth in the overall standings. And after they were able to tear through the preseason qualifiers, they've been slowly ramping up each and every single pro league day with their play. So they got fifth, I believe, last time, and they played in this lobby where they got second behind Moist. When they were able to play in that exact lobby with groups A and C, that's when they found the most success. Last both times, they were fragging out on World's Edge. Now with the season 20 changes, I am expecting this team comp to change up a lot. We haven't been seeing a lot of the conduit. Uh, Cat hasn't really been utilized too much unless you're playing for end circle and that wall really comes in clutch. So I'm expecting a big change from this squad overall going into the next two days. Yeah, GKS is definitely a really good shout. And we actually got a chance to speak with Naughty a little bit earlier on, hear his thoughts on the team and their performance in the season so far. What's up, everyone? Uh, I'm Naughty. My teammates are Saucer and Chaotic, and uh, coach is Colgen. And I'm a part of Team GKS, hoping to get signed here in the next coming weeks. Uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, we didn't start off so hot. I, uh, I wasn't able to play the first match day of LGS, uh, but I played the last three. And uh, we've been taking off, you know, progressing every week. Our storm point is not up to par with our world's edge. I believe our world's edge is uh, top three in pro league right now, which is pretty crazy. Um, our storm point isn't close to that yet, but uh, we're making some adjustments to that to hopefully qualify for lane here this year. Uh, yeah, so uh, GKS is actually um, playing caustic now, which is a big change for us. And I'm going to be the caustic player. Um, I think my play style adapts really well to caustic and for the team as well. Um, we're playing some Valkyrie as well uh, with the buff that she got with her perks. And uh, we're looking forward to uh, hopefully get our storm point better like I was talking about earlier with Valk. And uh, hopefully qual for land this year. And especially getting a new coach as well uh, should be a new card on the table that should play to our benefit. I'd love to be able to hear those stats uh, about their world edge performances so far, Vicky. That's impressive. Yeah, and what's even more interesting too, Glitter, is the fact that we are starting on World's Edge this time around, so that will benefit into their gameplay if they find that strength once again. All right, well, definitely a solid pick. Genome, it's time for me to ask you, you know, it's like, it, would it be DZ or would it be Eternal Esports Cup? No, it's definitely DZ. Tell me why you want to talk about him. 
because they're the best, Glitter. That's why I want to talk about them. I, you know, obviously, I mean, you can look at any leaderboard, uh, any stat line you want. They're on top of it. I mean, Zero and Jen Burton, the dynamic duo, have been together for such a long time now. Top two in kills, top two in damage. Um, they are just shredding the competition. It's not just that, uh, but the way they play these games, they are just so consistent at finding themselves uh, in end circles. And, you know, but it's not its not like they're, they're just a, a consistent team. They also have the pop-off moments, and this is one of the best ones we've seen in recent times. Uh, Zero taking on uh, his compatriots here in Moist Esports, and they've got that X Factor as well, right? They've got the clutch gene, um, and you can see Zero pulling it off here. It's like... Uh, you know, the lowest placement they've had so far in a Pro League day is the third. In what is the most competitive region, that is a ridiculous stat to take away with them. You know, I mean, they had a rough champs, right? They have bounced back from that like nobody's business because, frankly, no one wants it more. I mean, there's definitely a reason they are one of the only teams to hoist a trophy above their heads. But for me, I want to talk about Eternal Esports Club, okay? Yesterday, first day back in the new meta, and hands down, the best match day that they have had to date, whether that was World's Edge or Storm Point, I mean, this highlight package that we see running in the background, specifically from their win that they had in match number five, but this was a night and day difference when it comes to the performances leading up to this and then what we see in this new meta right now. They went from 26th overall to 16th overall just because of their performance here yesterday. They placed outside of top six only one time across all of their matches and you can see that reflected here in their stats. I mean, they were so consistent and that was something that they really needed. And then at the end of the day, we even got an opportunity to hear from Kosi in the interview as well. And he said part of the reason they were able to step it up was due to that roster change they had. We heard a lot about McLovin yesterday, added into the squad recently after that mid-season break. But they also just, they looked mechanically better. Kosi even said that they were winning uneven fights where they were able to overcome these armor discrepancies just because they were team fighting so much better as a squad. And if they can repeat the type of performance that we saw out of them yesterday, then they're gonna continue shooting up the leaderboards. So we'll have to see if they're able to then make it into that top 11. I mean, a, a 10 place rank jump in one day, it's pretty impressive if I say so myself, but we won't keep you guys waiting any longer. Match number one is about ready to go, which means Vicky and Genome, it's time to dive into NA. Glitter, thank you so much. Always love talking to Glitter out here. Genome. <laughs> this is Genome's sixth set of games for another region, guys. You have no idea how awesome it is to sit here alongside Genome, who literally eats, breathes Apex, doesn't sleep in between there, because the nope. game must go on. Literally embodiment of Apex Legends right here. Kind of looking like how I feel after uh, a set of ranked games just playing. <laughs> you know what? We strive and we keep going, and so do these pro players. I mentioned it earlier on, Genome, but we are starting off the day on World's Edge for our first three games before we transition onto Storm Point for our final three games. But Season 20 has brought in a lot of the change itself for a lot of our legends, introducing 100 new perks and the different ways that a lot of these teams could take advantage of that, as we saw yesterday. Man, who's got time for sleep? We, as you said, season 20's <laughs> come out. We need to be in there grinding, uh, you know, trying to understand these perks ourselves, get our hands on them and work out, uh, you know, how they play, what's good, what's not. Um, and yeah, that's what I've been doing. And, uh, you know, now I'm, now I'm here blasting it out on, on cast 24 hours a day, apparently. I can't have it any other way, Gino. This is what we need you here for as we take a look at the different drops for where these teams are going to be going into their POIs. Of course, we got two 50-50s going on, but Dark Zero does split that loot over by Skyhook into Trials there too, which plays one fantastically uh, depending on the comps that we're going to see. If they're going to still stick to what they had yesterday, I couldn't imagine otherwise after the success that they had, even looking all the way down to Temper and EEC over at Countdown. 
Yeah, exactly. So uh, I think we will see that. I'd be surprised to see like Darkseer and Cream run into each other yeah. that much, to be honest. I mean, obviously, uh, if you're playing Skyhook West and Trials, uh, you know, you see Zero drop in, do the Trials. Um, boost his armor up that way. But the other two probably aren't going to run into Cream that much, I would say. But we will keep our eyes uh, peeled for that countdown contest. Yeah, it's also about the uh, evil harvesters that spawn, I believe, 40 seconds after you, it, the first circle is revealed. So mm. that's something to note with some of the rotations and the pathing that some of these teams will be taking into wherever the circle will be pulling. But uh, when you split some of that loot, looking specifically at Dark Zero, having Trials loot, whether it be like a gold knockdown or anything, anything out of Trials or even having the survey beacon, because sometimes two survey beacons are put into Skyhook West and yeah. Skyhook East. It comes out really nice because if you know that Cream has already rotated quickly or they want nothing to do with dark zero this is sometimes a team that likes to play for final circle positioning that's some um, if you get that second scan because obviously you can't scan the same uh survey beacon twice or even a ring console for example you know if you could just wait there by the ring console that's extra points aside from an evil harvester that you could be farming for a higher level evil shield yeah, exactly. And, you know, maybe just something to quickly point out is that uh, this week you can double scan the ring console at the start of the game as well. Um, so that is still in here. Might, might be gone by next week. We'll see. Uh, but for the moment, you, if you drop early, you can get 400 Evo points just from um, scanning that ring console twice just to start with. Just a nice little note. Through Flyby through World Edge. Loving the transition that we have from one map to the other, halfway through Pro League, so that way some of these teams can make that quick adjustment that we could see as taking a look at the different legend compositions that we've been exposed to, too. From yesterday to today, a lot more Valkyrie. The Cossack is going to be a mainstay, as we've seen across multiple different regions. But I like to note the Mirage, the Gibby. It's been interesting. Not as much lifeline here as we saw no. back in Amia, but Not it's on something to keep your eye on. Yeah. Um, still got some uh, some horizons there. Eternal e EC. Um, and one other thing I was keeping my eye on there it was actually a discussion we had on the uh, the Longshot broadcast before Vicky it was whether you put your IGL on Bloodhound or on the Bangalore if you're going for that composition. So some teams have been toying around with that throughout the week. Um, and it is interesting to see that Dark Zero, for instance, we saw Zero going back onto the Bangalore, uh, which I would say he is one of, if not the best Bangalores in the world. And Jen Burton back onto the Bloodhound. Again, a comfort pick for him. Um, something he's played for, you know, almost since the game came out. Something really cool to note there. Especially since I feel like when you're on the Bloodhound, it, talking about legend comps and who should be the entry fragger, IGL when it comes to information, is yeah. all within this player strength, the individual player strength, and the way that they also use those comms. And it looks like already off the rip, we are getting that 50-50 here at Countdown. We tempered versus Eternal. Now let's not forget that LG is on the outskirts by Lava Fisher. We see the scan already, and this is why it's also so strong to have the Bloodhound early on with the scan. Even if you don't have the Blue Evo Shield here, it's a scan for scan on each side, but it's about having that information. 100%, that will help Tempa plan their attack here against EEC. Uh, both running the same composition. Um, that's Bangalore, Bloodhound, and Horizon. Uh, you know, not that the height's going to help them here particularly. Okay. Hold on. Shimmy shading our way right over the nades. No pressure here from Temper. I like the approach. Trying to wrap around. You see one of the thirds from Temper trying to actually take a different off angle. They're holding the corner. They hear him. Takes the wall hop, but misses the first PK shot. This is the entry frag oh. that they need. Oh, he gets beamed for it. He oh. still gets a knock. A nice little trade. I love the communication coming in from Temper. Just with the Mozambique in hand, and no knockdown shield could save you now. They get the res, and they get the reset, but look who's right around the corner, Genome. <laughs> Not going to let them get away with that one. Drop in gaming. What? They, they might be dropping by. I don't think they want them to drop in here. I mean, even running the Catalyst, trying to take advantage of the third party. Crook trying to get away. Wait a minute. He tries to go for an evil shield swap. 
but I think it was already swapped already at his feet when they were able to get the res. He pops his shield back instead, but it's the fact that dropped in already has the blue evil shields. Well, another factor to talk about here is, Vicky, is that it looks like it's going to be a countdown ring. So, I mean, yeah, sure, you can try and take these early fights, but all of a sudden there's like five, six teams around you. Uh, and it's extra tough because, of course, these teams haven't looted properly. They've been spending all their time fighting. Um, so as soon as these other teams pull up on them, they're going to be... It's going to be a really tough ask for them to um, to really make anything of this game when they're going to be in absolute shambles as far as loot goes. Yeah, it's not like we got a Loba to work with, too. And it's like what Genome was saying here, the circle pulling towards Countdown. Look at how many teams have made their way to Countdown. And in a circle like this, you could definitely expect a lot more teams to be alive around the second to last circle because there's a lot of real estate that these teams could play off of, whether it be the high ground, the low ground, or even sharing the same building. So expect there to be a high count of teams that will be playing out in that final circle. Now we get to see teams like Skirt making their way over. Shout out to Hambino and Co. Alvar Lely. Obviously wanting to take a little step back from comp, but while they do land, they want to go out with a bang if they can't care, especially with the way that they've been able to try to work and iron out any sort of issues that they have as a team. But Scurry is going to be able to find this spot, put down the bubble. And this is the thing, though, Gino, that when you play for final circle positioning like this with just a blue evil shield, yes, it, it's a lot of damage to try to get to purple, but that's what the evil harvesters are for. So they're denying themselves the opportunity to get that second perk for the late game. Yeah, it's very true. And, uh, you know, even even in that interview we had at the end of the EMEA series with Matafe, like he said it best, right? You, you really cannot rely on damage to upgrade from blue to purple. You have to be thinking about those resources around the map that are going to help you get up. All right, starting up the Beast of the Hunt happening. Maker just trying to take a different off angle, but Shubi has the high ground. Not the health advantage, though, while FaZe is coming up and creeping up right behind them. This is three teams in the area alone. Elevate need to try to keep onto this high ground if they can. They have this already cost with the Caustic Traps covering one side of the platform. Zap does have two more barrels if he needs to send one out on the other side, but this is just about negating the damage that could come in from a potential third party while FaZe is in the works. See a couple of teams getting into it over here in Lava Fisher as well. TSM LG and Ape Gang. Mozambique unironically coming in to try and save the day yet again. I can't believe I would even picture the Mozambique being used as much as we have seen. The beam comes in from Ape Gang. LG get eliminated, but right below them paying a visit is TSM waiting for the opportunity to come in. Havoc, talking about weapons in the Mozam. Havoc has definitely been one of those weapons to make its way into the Pro League. Such a great weapon, especially when you got that turbo charger, something that Hal doesn't have at the moment, but he does have that purple extended energy mag. He got the scan and he sees it's a caustic team, so they're just backing away for now. I mean, the guy on your screen right there, Verhulst, I mean, he is essentially the one who popularized this gun, right? Um, you know, he was playing with it last year, and all of a sudden, everyone has uh, just decided that the amount of, uh, you know, damage per mag that you can get, um, and, you know, Raven's favorite word, uptime, is something that the Havoc gives you, so... I've never slept on the Havoc. I was able to play this game no, when before no, no. the Havoc when before the Havoc even had a ramp up when it was a menace during season four to season five. As we see so many of these other players pick up not just the Havoc, obviously still rocking the G7 and the car, even without the Digi into play, but that's why you have the Bloodhound in the hands of Jed and Burden. They were able to get a knock originally. 18 squads left, counting it seven with complexity going down finally and this is the chaos for so many teams that have made that early rotate already into countdown and a lot of teams gone into countdown but uh they're gonna be sorely disappointed vicky because as you can see here on the ring it looks like it's actually heading for lava fisher <sighs> Oh, man, this is going to be crazy with the next ring pulling south. All these teams to the north side. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see how Dark Zero takes this rotate with 
TSM calling this out great because if they hold that building that we currently saw Verolson earlier, that northern building that then leads you into countdown, that could allow your team to have a 50 50 rotation whether you want to fully commit to countdown or if the circle benefits you and you don't have that circle ring information, you just stay in Lava Fisher and that's what TSM's doing. They're sitting pretty and they're not going to have to move anywhere to overextend and Dark Zero is feeding the pressure of this rotate. Yeah, because who's got this information? Optic are going to get it. They're actually going through staging right now. Elevate game who just went through landslide may have uh, that circle information. Um, but yeah, the other teams are up towards Countdown, like Dark Zero that we were looking at there. Um, they're not going to. So GKS, TSM, they're, they're, they're posted up right now in Lava Fisher and will be very happy about this. But uh, in a circle or two, we're going to get a big shift as these teams are... Check their inventories and they're like, ah, oh, please, do I have an evac tower in the survival slot? <laughs> Especially with the teams now landing with the Valkyrie ults too. So much Valkyrie in this lobby compared to what we had last seen in Amiya. It's kind of like they've flipped between the lifeline and the Valkyrie instead. Seeing more teams make their way into Lava Fisher. GKS, the team that I had on my radar, now holding that southern building. It's a good spot to hold if you want to also circle keep more of the other teams that take their time to rotate and mostly play by the edge. Thinking about teams like Optic, like you had mentioned, that we know lands over by stacks. Ape Gang on the high ground here, just looking at the chaos. But with more Cossack being played, definitely expect these teams to bunker now. Yeah, it's pretty much the name of the game. With one of our thick boys there. Love to get that set up. And just so impactful in the late game as well when space is restricted and the new larger area ultimate, if you do end up going for that perk, uh, can be extremely oppressive. This covers so much vision too. Even if you don't go for the perk, that does cover the vision in general. Between the Bangalore smokes, the Nox gas, if you don't have a Digi, you're at risk. And that's why we're seeing much more of these pros take advantage of pistols or even the Mozam, the shotguns in general, but the Mozam, the RE, saw that in Optic's hands. While they are holding on to the high ground, you can see knocked with that red Evo, and that's all thanks to that rotate here too. Let's jump into a listen in with Optic Gaming to see what their next plan is. We're just playing into that spot where we just were. Yeah. But we Someone flies into it, we need to blow the fuck out of them. Oh yeah. Zip zipping up, zipping up, from uh, from fucking graveyard. On me, it's a Valk, he's running. Is he alone? No, 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 there's two here. Oh, yeah, all threes, all threes. Bro, we can Valk. kill that Valk. Valk blood team. I, I don't think it's possible, his teammates are looking over us. They have burps. Batting. I think we might be able to just go to that spot now. I, yeah. I think... We need to wait for that team. They might just take the height as soon as we leave. Yeah, I know. I'm just wondering if it's like good cover there, you know? If they Valkyl, we zip for it, yeah? I'm fine with that. I just don't want them to take it before us, you know? I like the comms coming in from Optic. They're trying to plan ahead to see what their rotates are with the squad playing right below them here. But we saw in the middle of that comms where the circle is shifting. Think it go to Lava Fisher? Well, not wrong, it's gonna be going over to that southern building over at Countdown. It's a big shift back, isn't it, Vicky? I mean, oof. Um, I guess the silver lining for some of these teams is because no one had really scanned this in advance, uh, you know, we're not seeing teams rotate one way and then have to pull back. Um, they're probably seeing that, yeah, because obviously they can't see the next circle that we can. Um, and they're, yeah, look, they're starting to rotate now. You're seeing teams like uh, Dark Zero. They just took an evac around the side as we see Temper fighting for this very important spot. And they take it off skirt. Little do they know. Um, now they are mere meters away uh, for where that fifth circle will be. And, and that's why it's so important so that way you could start fights like that with an evil shield advantage even around the building like that you come out on top and get that extra loot and we see more of these teams rotate in whether it be from an evac or a valkyrie ult here dno 
Duke, no stranger to the Valk meta himself now. Gonna be able to cross in this distance with the Gibby. This is the double big boy comp too. We talked about it from Optic. We see it from DNO this time around instead. And they look fantastic when it comes to loot. Look at this, the gold extended energy mag on the Havoc, the turbo charger. Crust is looking like he is here feasting, putting down the Moby so that way they can also have some extra makeshift covers. A nice little creative way to <laughs> not burn your bubble early. Yeah, I mean, you are at risk in this uh, in this location, right? Unless you go to Watson, in which case you can actually fence pretty effectively in these little uh, corridors. But uh, yeah, it's kind of hard to cover both sides at once effectively. So I do like the use of this double Moby because um, as we know, when we do get one of these circles, Vicky, it tends to to pull around that corner where DNO is playing. So uh, that bubble for them is about to pay off in spades. Oblivion get eliminated in your feed. Native cleaning up shop here. Still playing off that slight low ground. Gonna be able to get the loot they need right before these teams here and landside start engaging on this rotate. This is sometimes a little bit of a risky rotate, even if the circle is pulling more towards that countdown spot, but you're still out in the open for team from Lava Fisher building, or even by that choke that we saw Oxygen waiting at, that could just take free pickings at the teams that are rotating out of landslide. Definitely some options down there. Uh, you know, Oxygen, one of those teams looking to hold out game and gladiators. You can see they've already converted the care package into a Kraber. That gives you the over... Was that a no reg? <laughs> um... I swear I heard that hit. <laughs> I, he I heard... I heard it. I heard it. Unlucky. And Lou is also <laughs> unlucky. They just focus fired him with the 30-30 while they were focusing on the team right in front of them. That's gonna allow E8 now to move forward. Closing the gap, take care of whoever else is left here. Oh. And Cam Gaiman Gladiators get taken out. That was so unfortunate here too, because they had looked through their back and there was nobody there just yet. It was Elevate that had timed that rotate perfectly. Okay, Oxygen playing the cut here. So they are the team looking out towards SSG, Optic, Elevate, GKS, as they all try and walk in here through essentially open ground, but they're gonna have to pick their way through a bevy of Bangalore missiles as rolling thunder just sweeps across the plains. Not what I was expecting on the menu here, at least when it comes to the Bangalore smokes, it's slow down just slightly as the circle closes in. Skittles takes the other route around the <laughs> mountains. <laughs> and tries to get the B with the RE. Elevate get taken out in the middle of this rotate. Optic are gonna beat them right back in the lobby. 10 squads left as look at their health. They're literally one shot each and every one of them, but they get the shield core swap and they stay alive for now. Oxygen do the job. I liked how proactive they were about that, going out to make sure the damage was done and any team rotating in, you know, didn't even really have time to sit there and pop meds. They just had to run at them. Especially with a circle like that. Say goodbye to your health in an instant. Eight gang have been in this building since they rotated over here to Lava Fisher. Taking this fight to Dark Zero, I believe that they're playing right below them. TSM have not engaged fully because they still have a little sliver of the circle that could allow them to rotate to countdown. But is it worth it with there being three to four different teams waiting for them on the countdown side of where the circle is pulling towards? Yeah, I mean, they're in a position right now. They need to decide which way is their best option into the next circle. I think it's probably through countdown side. Uh, you know, there was even an interesting clip um, that came out uh, last uh, last week, Vicky, where we had Verhulst and Hal discussing what the best way to get into that next circle was. And, uh, you know, they didn't make the right choice there. Hopefully they VOD reviewed that and learned from it. Oh, no. Jen gets knocked. The circle is just doing too much damage. They're both they're all dead. Yeah, there was no way they could rotate through this. That oh. was unfortunate here. And coming in from the skies, this is the Verhol's Valkyrie. We've seen this before. But the moment they land, Reps gets taken out. This is the risk when you go for these later rotates. Unfortunately, they had no other choice. They get the banner, but they can get the shield swap while they're at it. Unfortunately, it's only up to Verhol's and TSM die on their rotate. It is temper that we're waiting for them to land on top of them. 
here. And here's the fight that's happening right in front of that Southern Countdown building. Ape Gan GKS so close to going down as Oxygen Esports overlook the fight, get involved in the third party without turning their backs to DNO that are watching the fight. I mean, smoke everywhere. The team's essentially just spraying through it. The Bloodhound in ult, probably the only one who has any idea what's actually going on in this fight. And there we go. Uh, the knockdown shields can't last forever. And Oxygen do completely clear out their southern side. Uh, they put themselves in a fantastic position now. Native Gaming eventually take that spot away from DNO. Uh, you can see their box is just there. Uh, and this is a great spot for them to be in. Dropping gaming can open the door and come out behind them, though. When you need a quick patch up. Don't worry for that. It's native. Restabilize. Space Station somehow still alive, I believe, as a solo. But in the line of sight of Oxygen, as they haven't fully realized it just yet. You see how they play around this next corner. Four squads left. It's Oxygen, Space Station, Dropping Gaming, and Native Gaming. Honestly, hard to call. Um, okay, so the circle is ending uh, just in front of this command center. So, uh, yeah, like, like <laughs> trying to describe it as the uh, orientation strategy, but just to the left here of where Dropping Gaming is looking on the platform um, facing out towards Oxygen. So... Um, I think all teams are eventually going to get forced out of their positions. It's it's kind of just depends on which one is first. Obviously, that faint circle in the middle there um, was giving you the indication of where these teams will be heading towards. But who gets forced out first, Vicky? That's always the question. But this is the issue, though. With Dropping Gaming making their third party rotate off the very like minute of the game, they've denied themselves the opportunity to get Evil Harvesters, which is why they're playing in this final circle with only blue Evo Shields. They landed in Landslide, third party Temper and EEC, and this is where they have not moved from the beginning of the game, minus maybe looting the death boxes that have presented themselves outside the armory mm. doors. So this is going to be so difficult to make this approach with everybody else having purple. Yet the legends in play here are also going to make a big difference. Catalyst from the inside with her wall available. That'll be a big factor. We've also not really talked about yet that Klain is on Seer. Uh, so, you know, will he have the exhibit up? Um, obviously not a character that we've seen a lot so far in this Season 20 patch. Time to get an inkling of whether that's going to pay off or not. Oh, but the cat will also be waited to use at the very end. Huge as Zainu punches him into the circle. Space Station is somehow still alive, but I'm not too sure for how long. Three squads left. SSG go out in third. Our last two squads between Native Gaming dropped in gaming and Native take game number one. Big plays from Native. I mean, we talked about how good that spot was uh, when DNO were there. And of course, if you can beat them out for it, you are rewarded. Luxfordy, of course, coming across uh, from the Meat Riders. So uh, that's, uh, that pickup is certainly looking pretty good if you are Klain and Rambo right now. And it's nice to also see the Seer being utilized when we see so much Bloodhound and I guess it's the consideration that you could see everything through the Bangalore smokes, the caustic gas traps, um, even with the exhibit up, or if you manage to get that tactical out too, and you get to keep the scan on them for longer, um, as that is one of the perks available for Seer. You can just keep that enemy highlighted like you can for Bloodhound. But they also, I believe, had that rotate from Monument quickly over to Countdown. So they had to wrap around Countdown and still fight for their way into that final circle. Because if you were rotating from the land side side for that final circle, that was incredibly difficult. And that's why only Oxygen was able to come out from that choke. Yeah, because they were the first there, right? Like it's, it's yeah, once you were set up in that position, uh, it was incredibly hard, as you said. I mean, we saw how many bang ults got thrown out. It, it didn't really matter which team you were, uh, you know, you were like maybe three or four coming out at the same time. And uh, at that point, you, you almost can't even heal through it. Yeah, I'm wondering here, uh, a lot of the teams that fell early on in that game, Luminosity, 
uh, unfortunately falling pretty early for that game number one. Let's take a look at the match results and see what happened here. Native Gaming not only take the dub, but they take it with 10 KP to their name. Dropped in, we saw where they rotated, where they were, and they were able to get the 2 KP from the third party that they came in originally from, with Space Station surviving to the very end, surviving over Oxygen that tried to contest that rat. Punching one of the members into the circle for Oxygen Esports had fallen in fourth. But with 8kp, Temper with 9, it's pretty evenly split when you take a look at the kill count for our top 10 squads. Minus DNL. Yeah, a little bit of an outlier there. Temper with 9 is, yeah, honestly pretty impressive by them. Um, as we move down, we get to see Elevate Gaming, who managed to pick up a couple. Game and Gladiators, who I, I think maybe took out one of those teams uh, around Landslide before falling in the, the great push towards Oxygen. Uh, and then below there, it's, uh, it's Slim Pickings. Yeah, that's, that's what we're talking about. LG all the way at the bottom, 19th Eternal as well complexity phase as we take a look at native gaming stats for that game look how even this is even luck forward with the 2kp following up with the damage to help clean out get that 4kp but i like the communication coming in from native gaming you could tell that the vibes are high here for this team and they were able to follow up with one another but can they keep that going into this next game on world's edge is the question I mean, well, at least they've given themselves uh, the good vibes to start with, right? They've given themselves a <laughs> chance to um, start getting that momentum. We know, we know Rambo can definitely get high on those. Rambo is always built different when it comes to this team, but it's a great showing for our first game to see that diversity legend pick that we were talking about before, especially with the Seer coming into play instead of the Bloodhound. Can that help? keep them in these fights we're gonna have to see as we wait for game number two on the other side of this break don't go anywhere because we got some more world's edge action my short list but my long list and Sia was not on that I, it, it worked for native gaming who come out on top in match number one and they had to do so in a pretty aggressive fashion they had to put push in like you guys were talking about and take that space away from dno it ended up working out for them really really well um but we've we also saw a couple other changes like vicky had pointed out no more double big boy on behalf of optic they've also gotten rid of the valve kind of changed it up for uh, a more popular composition, but we did see 
Gibby on a couple other teams. So we're still getting a little bit of variety here in NA, um, which I love to see right now. I'm not mad about it. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of viewers that want to see Gibby back, right? There's right? just something about bubble fights, the way it, it enables MK players, if you're a fan, the way it enables shotguns, uh, just a couple of things that I feel like we'd be missing from Apex, that we'd be missing from the competitive scene uh, for maybe a year or so now. And I, I think we're ready uh, to have that sort of, that fresh injection of, of something a little bit different back into the game. Yeah, and the, and the shotguns is a good call out too because we've talked about how important they've become with the changes made to the digi threat not being on the SMGs now. And then you combine that with the likes of a Gibraltar and that is something that can be super useful, especially for the chaos that is those final end game fights. So it's interesting to see the way that the different regions are utilizing the different legends. Yeah, it's uh, it's always a fun time sort of, you know, comparing the different regions and then, of course, seeing how all those styles clash together at LAN, right? And, I mean, obviously with most regions picking up that Bang Blood Caustic uh, mm -hmm. the most, um, again, Caustic's one of those runaway picks where, you know, it, it starts to snowball, you get a couple and the rest of the lobby kind of feels like they have to follow suit, so... Uh, potential for that um, if we uh, get these different regions playing against each other once we get onto the big stage too. Yeah, land is going to be really exciting in this meta. I cannot wait to see what happens there. But of course, we're still talking about what we've got going on right now. If you're just joining us, we're in match number two, heading into our next match on World's Edge. I want to see if we get, we do, we're getting another Seer native game and sticking with it after it went really well for them in match number one. I, I want to see if this could maybe change some opinions on popularity when it comes to these legends. Obviously, we've got some Watsons in there. We've got some Valks in there. I, I kind of harped on NA for not really having as much legend variety. I feel like I'm getting proven wrong right now, and this is exciting. I mean, even the Watson Catalyst we're seeing yeah. come out of dropping gaming, right? Uh, that's something I question. Um, I think in terms of how it plays together it's really good right if you find a spot in zone it's incredibly powerful but you're also sacrificing a bunch of evo upgrade um by having by doubling up on a class there as well so that's definitely something that these teams have to consider um but you know it's it's essentially the the comp that uh you know black hand now legends gaming popularized at champs now, one of the things that did happen early on in match number one was this contest over at Countdown between Temper and EEC. It did not go the way of EEC in match number one, and it looked like it could have potentially boded really well for Temper when we saw where that first zone ended up shifting straight on to Countdown, but Temper could not fend off all of the other squads who eventually started pushing in, trying to hold for position. We see now, though, that these two teams are opting for a more, a more conservative contest. They're splitting countdown right now, not going for that same initial engagement. Although EEC does look like they're trying to at least kind of keep an eye on temper and see if they can maybe do a little bit of poke damage here. And it's interesting how countdown uh, contests have changed as well. Because you got to think about before it was really a rush for those armors in the middle of countdown. Mm. You wanted to pop them out uh, and try and grab a blue or a purple that way. Not really a factor anymore. So yeah, they are just splitting it south to north and now finally getting into a bit of a fight. Looks like McLovin making a push up here as they're able to get a little bit of space in Temper's area. But Kosi takes a lot of damage, forcing the smokes out and having to back off here, maybe get some heals going, get those shields back up, and hopefully at, have enough time before Temper tries to make a move, knowing they've got a little bit of an advantage here. Ooh. They are able to find him down low. Carter goes down. Kosi still in a rough spot, honestly. It's down to one for EEC. This is going to be another push here for Temper that could go in their favor. Yeah, they're covering all the angles. He's trying to use that double time to get away, but cannot. That's EEC going down this time. So Temper, after a very good game one, might 
be looking to push themselves off the bottom of those overall Ooh. standings. And not in a bad space yet again when it's going to come to a rotation here as we get a look at the zone for the first time. Epicenter going to be a little bit of a hotbed, but now we actually get to jump on board with complexity as well as the squad who won first game. I think I saw Native in there right now. Lou dealing some damage. Also pointing out Retsy is in for the squad here today. Kimchi not able to play this time around. So we'll have to see what Complexity can do with a little bit of a switch up. Yeah, a little bit sad to see, you know, Kimchi was, uh, I saw a tweet from him, I think it was yesterday, you know, being so proud of how uh, far Complexity has come as a squad. How many people counted them out? Um, and they really have shown the haters here. It's been been fun to see. Dino trying to get out, but Monsoon! <laughs> oh, he just loves to light up the highlight reels with that Sentinel. And once again, just waits for the perfect shot at the Apex and sayonara. Just a little little clip for the highlight reel there out of Monsoon doing a good job. Also putting Native on a back foot now as they are going to have to deal with having lost one of their players. We're now looking in with LG, and LG was a team I was wondering how they were going to do in this fight here today. FaZe and TSM also going at it back and forth. Beast of the Hunt has been popped by Hal, and he's trying to do a little bit of rap here, get a different angle and start dealing some damage. Able to catch one of the enemy players out, but ends up getting knocked in response. However, the rest of the squad is quick to follow up with some damage and try to see if they can salvage this fight. Yeah, nice trade out there from Verhulst and Reps. Um, they need to be quick about it. Ape Gang have heard the commotion and they're pulling up. I doubt they'll be able to get the res. As Optic have actually just got out of this. They have, uh, I think they've got a hint that um, perhaps Ape Gang were in the area and they don't want any more of that nonsense. All right, they'll get out. Ape Gang. Just looting up in Ghost Town. So that means TSM probably will then be able to get the reset. Honestly, kind of lucky. Yeah, that's kind of massive, honestly. Taking out FaZe, who were over by that geyser area where they dropped, could have had a pretty easy rotation. Now they've gotten rid of a big squad. TSM able to stay alive. Ape Gang focusing on Optic Gaming. Both of those teams moving past Overlook. Meanwhile, we're getting to check in with what Temper has going on. They've kind of hung out in this area after they were, a they were able to win their contest against Eternal. And now they're going to be pushing through this tunnel here into Sky and trying to go for a little bit of a safer, longer rotate here and they honestly should have a decent amount of space to work with yeah they've uh got plenty for themselves over there in sky hook uh you know dark zero and cream are sort of lurking but uh, as this circle closes in we'll get an idea of whether it's more acclimatizer circle maybe an epicenter one as well as as teams are definitely hedging their bets on that side at the moment um, Dark Zero, of course, with that Bloodhound, will be able to pull up onto this house and get the player scan. Ooh. Well, that shift is definitely going to start setting up some of our teams to be pretty comfortable. You can see where a lot of these squads are trying to hold a little bit of position. LG was alone in that climatizer area kind of holding that down, but Optic Gaming starting to make a move into their space, and we had mentioned Overlook as well. Ape Gang ended up sticking around, and TSM eventually had to rotate through, so now TSM finding themselves back in a fight here with Ape Gang. But I doubt anyone really wants to fight here for too long, just in case there is a team on a late Check rotate that could potentially third party this Ape Gang, look like they want to play it safe and decide to get out of dodge. Yeah, they're backed out there. I mean, Verhulst, obviously, on the Valkyrie can get up on top of the Sars. It's a strong spot with less horizon um, than there was at the start of this split. Um, you know, vertical supremacy there is, uh, is something that counts for a bit. Dark Zero don't have any of that themselves. They've got to rely on brute strength, a lot of fighting power coming out in this Bang Blood Caustic comp. He's got very 
both uh you know obviously the the smokes and the beast of the hunt providing it at sort of uh you know mid to to long ranges and then the caustic up close is quite deadly yeah i'm still looking at the map here with aping that was actually a huge a really strong call to back away from that fight they were also able to hit an evo harvester and get their shields leveled up as they rotated away now they're giving themselves a little bit of time to find some position so that was really really strong on behalf of that squad meanwhile tsm still in the area and complexity now making that late rotate uh something i said they could potentially have to worry about one of those squads coming through trying to do some poke damage in the backs of tsm and complexity looking quite comfortable here with those purple evos so while they're trying to decide whether or not they should be fighting tsm let's jump in and listen and see what their comms are having to say so i need to come back oh no there's two on me riding come back come back i'm good i'm good i'm good i mean right 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 it's nice right. I'm, 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 I'm help us messy i'm coming i'm coming i'm about to bangle on the north now i'm with you i'm with you i'm, you. I'm, I'm swinging it i have you i have you swing. I got him, got him! I'm fully away! I'm going up on the rock! Going up on the rock! My bingo! My bingo, boys! Okay, okay, okay. They're, they haven't raised off that! Oh, I got one! My re knocked! Nice. Re knocked! I'm, I'm locking up, yep. locking up! Busting dead, busting dead! Nice, baby! I'm with you, I'm with you. One's close, one's close. Yeah, I don't know where. He's running, he dropped, he dropped west, he dropped west. Careful for a back now! Don't let him! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm getting four kills. Get fucking shit, Lou. We need to check our back. Oh, 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 we do. I'm finishing here, boys. Yeah. yeah, smoke me, smoke me if you can. Watch our back, watch our back. I smoked, I already smoked. Yeah, I'm looking back, south. Uh, two on this rock, two on this rock here. It's a caustic bane bloodhound. We might have angles on them. They're not in yeah. a good spot here. Uh, I need to grab They're getting shot, they're getting shot. They dropped on low on the south. Okay, okay. On We're the coming. south of this fucking thing. Yeah. Like in the middle of the open. Yeah, I don't see. Do you see that guy? No, I don't see anybody. Right here, 95 on caustic. 70 on right there, right there, 15 flash, 15 flash. I'm nading that. I'm gonna kill real quick. Good kill, good kill. I might be able to go all crossover on this this platform and look right, down right, on them. Flash, flash. Almost nice, nice, nice. Nice. Almost nice. Nice. Not another team on the west platform. Yeah, okay. Okay. We need to collab with them. Just collab. Just collab. Sixty correct. They're they're still on the classic one. They're dying. They're dying. They're dying. There's another team on the southwest and another team on our front. guys just came by blood. I don't know if it's his teammates or not. We should I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah, just go back. Go back. Let me play on. this. Yeah, he's in zone right here. In zone right here. On, inside the RV. Smoking my cross. We can just play in too. I'm going to get this he's fucking full kill. Door. Yeah, yeah. We, we can. And we're. Got it, got it, got it. Nice. Tunnel, 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 tunnel. He's in, in zone. There's a fucking hound in zone. In yeah, yeah, zone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. There's another hound over here. It's the solo hound from earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we should probably drop and look in the tunnel right now. There's Can one somebody hound come in with tunnel. Me? There's one hound in the tunnel right now. Can right. somebody stay on top and look? Actually, right, I'll stay on top. I'll spot. stay on top. We just need to play in their spot. We'll kill him on zone close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to look in front of us right rest, now. They rest. rest. They rest. Uh, over on the left? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if we can do anything off yeah, that. Yeah, Oh, complexity! Get the better of TSM. You can still see Hal's still alive there. Now he actually is ratting. Uh, I don't think they actually were ratting when complexity called it before. That might have been some poor awareness. But hey, they turned it around in no time at all. And that was impressive because not only were they able to really push off TSM, but then they just continued following up damage after damage. And they've successfully cleared out that whole portion of the zone. But now back on board with DNL Gaming, who have gotten fully reset before after they ran into uh, Complexity and Monsoon's Sentinel. Now finding themselves back and forth here down to just Senox, who's trying to survive, able to clean up temper, tries to escape, but then the third party comes through. Was that oh. Hal? Did, sorry, did I, Hal get that I, I last kill? I, I don't know. I was trying to pay attention to the kill feed. That was chaos. If that was Hal, then that that uh, was an insane. <laughs> was that like the best timing ever to jump in on that third party? Uh, I mean, look, if anyone could do it, it's Hal, right? That's, uh, that's pretty cool. He might actually run into another solo. Native Gaming uh, is just ahead of him. If he wants another 1v1, well... Here's his chance. Oh, there's a barrel in the way, though. I mean, yeah, you have to worry at this point, right? Because you're like, uh, you're expecting a team around every corner. You're not expecting another solo. He can't. Oh, no! 
control a moment struggles to get up over the oh man that's it how is usually one of the best movement players as far as control players go but you can see just struggling uh, a little bit with the the lava river there <laughs> that was definitely rough but that was impressive survival on behalf of how while also getting some more kp on the board meanwhile complexity who was on an absolute slaying tear now finding themselves stuck inside of this building down to just monsoon if i'm not mistaken eighth game pushing in trying to clear out the squad and finding themselves in a really easy spot it monsoon does go down ends up being crook who takes him out and now ape gang find themselves owning this building in a, in a much more comfortable position yeah they're gonna have to start shifting west though glitter they'll have to go past dropping gaming we saw them um you know kind of being the trolls under the bridge locking down that one that goes into epicenter gaming gladiators will go a bit more south and then you've got the people who are actually in epicenter and I, I feel like you almost never expect the zone to end here so uh the fact that dark zero ssg and elevator even ended up in this area is either luck or some just you know amazing shot calling 2000 iq okay that, that's that's what it is not to mention dz's been holding this low ground underneath ssg and just kind of cautiously coexisting for quite some time meanwhile everybody that's even remotely close to the edge is about to find themselves in the middle of an engagement like you said drop in gaming and doing a good job gatekeeping that eastern edge of the zone and ape gang will have to push through that but oxg one of those teams that helped complexity take out some of those teams in the middle now finding themselves running into gaming gladiators trying to do some damage and really be annoying on this rotation and as i say that some nice little quick cleanup there out of reeds to clear up some more space yeah oxygen esports playing trolls to the sequel i guess because they're on the other bridge down the bottom and they uh essentially gave gaming gladiators that same treatment that dropping gaming are looking to do uh to ape gang right now with maybe a little bit of help from optic as well who took uh a rotate in via evac i believe to make it across the lava river uh and then yeah we've got all, all our other teams the lg duo elevate dark zero ssg uh safer on the western side of the zone that you can see there no more gibbies allowed so we won't be getting any late game bubble fights here but we do have a craver in the hand of skittle cakes trying to see if he can land any shots here on the squads around as you can see just how much caustic gas is being used to zone right now in this area i mean that's gonna at least give optic a little bit of time to decide how they want to handle this because there's so many teams around them and they know they have to continue moving in that they have to pick a direction to do that safely they've got drop in gaming above them who still have ape gang in the vicinity lg is up there as well so you can see in this overview just how many teams are about to get into it lg they surprise dropped and with that um they can you know potentially make this happen now because it's a 2v2 if they want to take this fight they need it um you know to get that sort of uh they have that element of surprise I mean, talk about maximizing your situation when you were in a 2v3 that was huge. It also opens up the door for Ape Gang to take a different route in, maybe clean up some of this KP instead of having to push through drop in gaming. It's not going super well for them, but Dan is able to get a heal off here and keep himself momentarily alive. Don't think he's going to be able to stick that rest as there's to do a right across the way in Optic Gaming here. Doing some nice damage though onto Skittle Cakes. What? Mm, zone's closing though. Glitter time is running out. He's trying to work out how he can even make it out of this situation. Might be time to pop the evac, run up the stairs. He's going to be running straight into that LG duo. Optic Gaming getting caught in the crosshairs of everybody down low. Like you said, now LG the next in line for Ape Gang, but Ape Gang is the one that goes down. Sweet, still alive. Fun, still alive. They've effectively cleared out low ground but now everybody knows where they are someone's gonna try and clean them up they have to move in you see elevate down there as well and things are getting chaotic 
teams on this side shoved into small positions, but Dark Zero, like usual, are bullying the teams around them, using damage as a way to force the other teams away from them and clear space for themselves. As it stands, they've got about half this final zone to themselves. This was just phenomenal positioning on behalf of Dark Zero. They have really, really solid sight lines on the rest of the teams as well. And know that a lot of fights have been happening, so there is the potential for those teams on the other half of the zone to at least be on a little bit of a back foot, either down to a duo or having taken a lot of damage. <laughs> I don't even know how Elevate's supposed to get out of this. So, you know, we're just gonna go for a little bit of a climb. Hopefully nobody <laughs> notices. Not, not working. <laughs> Um, <laughs> oh, this arc there, star. There we go. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, beautiful push out of DZ. They do lose Sykes, though, and this could be an opportunity for OXD to try to move in and clean up this match. They don't do it fast enough, so it's possible DZ will be able to reset Oxygen playing very conservatively here, and they are able to get a reset DZ about to go up in a 3v3 against a very healthy OXG. Sykes needing just a few more seconds to get his health back up fully, and then we can see how these two squads are gonna close it out, but OXG lose Vayne. They're now down to two. DZ trying to hold them off. The knockdown shield coming to play. Reeves, the last hope, and DZ, don't let OXG take it. They close out match number two. The clutch gene, there it is. Uh, even when they were down health. I mean, yeah, as you said, Oxygen pulling into that. They've got, you know, full reds, full health, full everything. What more could you want? They even had the Caustic Ultimate. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, Glitter. Literally three seconds sooner. I think if they had just pushed in a little bit quicker if they had been ready to go a little bit sooner mm. that could have been a fight that went in OXG's favor because they had three reds everybody full health their kits ready to go i mean i think it was just that split second of indecision that gave dz the opportunity to get sykes back up and fully reset yeah i think zach agrees with you just uh he had some advice uh for oxygen in the lobby chat just now <laughs> he said uh i, I think just let dz rest <laughs> Yeah, um, I, I think you might be onto something there. Uh, and it was an important fight as well. Uh, you know, not to take away from Oxygen and, and what they've done so far, right? Because they were sitting in number one spot going into that final fight. So they're, they're essentially fighting with DZ over first place in this lobby. Uh, wow. And that fight may have meant that Dark Zero leapfrogged them and start, uh, you know, start sort of taking that momentum away from them. Definitely well played on behalf of DZ. Um, still a strong finish for OXG. They even had the oh. nine kills to go with it, but the 13 KP for DZ. I mean, you've got to be happy, Genome. This is what you wanted. It is. It is. I, I am happy. There's a smile on my face right now. 25 points in a single game here. Dark Zero putting numbers up already. I have a big shout out to LG here. Uh, five placement points and three kills for eight. That, considering they were a duo for most, uh, like, you know, the last maybe three circles or something. Yeah. Um, that really impressed me. The way they were able to, uh, uh, to navigate that. Uh, especially when you think about how many bloodhounds are in the lobby right now. How easy it is to send, identify, and then send duos. Uh, well played. I mean, we'll take a look at the second page here, but there's lots of teams not on this first page that I feel like still had impressive performances. I'm talking about complexity. They had eight kills. They just went out a little bit earlier than they would have liked, but the slaying power that we saw coming out of that squad, I think even Lou had almost 2K damage to himself, the most damage in the lobby for that last match. So this is not necessarily, at least their placement's not reflective of the performance that we saw heading into that. And the, I mean, the Howl almost saving all of that genome. Yeah. Cleaning look, up GKS. I, I mean, I want to talk about their comp a bit, honestly. Glitter, I mean, they're picking the Valkyrie, right? I personally do not think that's the strongest pick right now. I mean, we saw, uh, you know, in game one, they made the Oob play uh, mm -hmm. and they, they went down to temper. Oobing is just... I, <laughs> 
when you think about the last time that Valkyrie was meta, uh, that was before they had made fundamental changes to the game where you could heal, you could take out your weapons, uh, and oobing was a lot more effective. You had people oobing uh, with caustic gas, right? Like throwing a caustic ultimate from the high ground and then just dropping down into it. You can't do any of that anymore. You drop down, um, you're essentially kind of like naked when you get there and you have to reholster or like unholster your guns and, and come out of it. And uh, that's why we saw Temper um, take them out when we went over to countdown so i just don't know about valkyrie you know i i i it, it you lose a lot of power within fights and sure tsm have got spades of that um to start off with naturally with a firepower mm. on their team um but it does feel like they need a little extra something here well we'll have to see if they continue on with the comp or not but we also need to talk about our top two squads because they both had impressive performances. I know people might be upset that OXG let DZ get that rest, but look at the damage coming out of OXG. Outside of that, they still had a strong game. They had over 3,500 damage for their nine kills compared to DZ's 3K damage for 12. To be fair, DZ was more efficient, but both of these squads really, really strong. Yeah, I mean, nothing to take away from either of them really is there, but, uh, you know, it, it's a six-point swing, that last fight. Yeah. Right, you got to think about that. If you if you win it, you get all, all three kills, and you get the placement points as well, and there you go. There's only th sorry, two points between wow. them. That's such hard <laughs> math to do. Um, <laughs> Uh, so DZ still don't catch up to them, um, but they're so much closer as a result of winning that last fight one match can to really turn it around for some of our teams. I mean, Native Gaming still finding themselves in third place after that strong first game performance, and then things start to get really close from there on out, but when we're looking at the second page, we need to see some of these other squads start to step it up, especially when it comes to the bigger picture of trying to continue on to the next stages of the competition. However, it's only match number two on the day. Okay, we have six in total, which means four more left in store for everybody, but only one more on world's edge as far as our side of things so that means it's time for another short break while our players get ready to get into match number three so don't go anywhere if you're watching the apex legends global series Welcome back, everyone, to the ALGS. I am back here alongside Dean. I'm letting Glitter take a break and back out here. But man, what a game number two that is. Dark Zero, Gino. <laughs> I know, I know you are facey right now. I know oh, that you've had yeah. Dark Zero on your sights for so long, all for the right reasons, right? We all have, and they still stay as consistent as ever. But it looks like our pros here aren't wasting any time. Let's jump into game number three, our final game on World's Edge. 
I miss him, Vicky. I mi that, that's why I'm back here. I miss, I miss my boys. I miss the moist boys even, you know. They made their way over to NA. Sometimes we get to see them at land. That's great. But, uh, you know, I, I just wanted to check in with them midway in the split. And, and it turns out they're doing pretty good. Genome's a part of the OG Burger Brigade, all right? I'm, I'll never forget that, all right? <laughs> we got to see how some of these teams play things out here. Looking at the countdown 50-50 that we continuously see here. Once again, this is also the last time some of these teams that may find that success on World's Edge have the opportunity to put some of those extra points on board before they transition onto Storm Point. One of those teams actually being GKS that we were talking about before that usually finds their strengths in World's Edge. But having to figure things out this time around with Season 20 providing the changes that they have. A lot of changes coming through from this season. <laughs> Including uh, all of your contests will essentially happen on white armors now. So as you can see, across the board, Evo Harvesters coming online. There is one to the west of Countdown. Neither of the contesting teams are anywhere close to it to try and give themselves an advantage in that way. In fact, they may actually just dip. Temper have gone already. And as you can see, uh, the circle's heading towards staging. So Oxygen, who have already been doing very well, have uh, been given yet another boon. Oh, man. But as you said, that reads in vain get deleted dropped in gaming trying to capitalize but the third party is around the corner we did see lg make a quick rotate from lava fisher already into staging so with dropped in playing off this low ground it could be a little risky unless they find a way into onto the bridge and there's the beam right on top it is lg making their way to involve themselves in this fight hmm nice little pick up for them to start with LG, as we said, making uh, the most of a mess last game. And Funk already getting a kill on the table. They can start trying to make their way a little further up the leaderboard now. Oh, they went for that res frame one. They did not waste any time on that one. Let's reposition there. Immediately was able to get that player right back in. Dropped in. What do, what do you reckon? Were they just uh, they just doing it for the Evo, Vicky? <laughs> it could be for the Evo. They got the server to their left, or rather to their south side of Mirage. That's actually crazy because you have to also imagine the other teams rotating from land side, seeing that res may start rotating from the west side of where the circle is going to be pulling. With more teams now right playing here. off the low ground, though. Ipgan pinging the squad that's right above. It's Oxygen, LG on the train tracks, GKS at Land Thermal. I believe now have called in an evac. You can hear them flying in now too. Actually on the other side, that's complexity. So two teams now flying in right by Thermal, closer to the train tracks, landing on top of LG. TSM getting a whiff of the fight, looking to be not just the fourth, but potentially the fifth party here in this masquerade. Oh boy, it is getting... Very risky up here on the train tracks. Scans, I'm sure, will reveal that. TSM might even think twice about about fighting this. Yeah, you see the number pop up. Six hostiles? Ah, maybe not. Maybe we should just chill. <laughs> he turned around so quick. <laughs> oh, nice ping. He called it out too. Somebody playing off that tunnel side. That could be GKS who have actually rotated away from that choke leaving thermal around the corner or Oblivion who have rotated away from Harvester. This look like it's Oblivion looking at the players inside. Yes, Splinter is going to be able to pop that shield cell. They're not going to be leaving this spot anytime soon, but the one team that Oblivion does need to worry about is GKS that are still rotating out of thermal. Yeah, bottom and top of the tracks, though, I think. So they might be okay for the moment. I like LG playing in Dorito here. That's a solid option when you get one of these circles. And, you know, it's probably going to be staging, but it can pull a bit towards thermal. Uh, it just gives you options, especially when they've got evacs in hand. As you can see, at least one on Funk there. Funk's got great attachments on this 3030. 
All purple, a skull piercer ready to go. Won't be blue evil for long as Optic take on to the roof before going inside of the building actually instead. They do hear there's another team inside of this. Knock does have that turbo ready, immediately starts blasting away. Oh, he quick with it. Oh, he's <laughs> quick with the barrels. Cute little taps there. Uh... Just gotta show off just a little bit. You didn't get the scan though, right? Right underneath them, but it's still knowing that there is a team playing right underneath this middle Lava Siphon building. And with a lot of the other Southern teams, you have to imagine Lava Siphon is in that middle point of the South side of, of World's Edge. So a lot of teams like to rotate through here. So there could be a third to fourth party coming in. Definitely, there's five teams in Lava Siphon. All the surrounds at the moment. They probably will start pulling out very soon, though, as they realize uh, certainly not where the circle is heading. Still See. 20 squads and all 60 players still alive as we take a look at the circle. Ah. So we've had one kill. Got that res going. <laughs> That's where the Mirage Rotoire really does come into play when it has that Moby, or rather that respawn beacon. Now we get to take a look at DNO with their rotate. This is one of the teams rocking the Valkyrie double big boy. But they take their time to rotate into that next circle here, playing in the ring so that way they can get that survey beacon if they can. Any extra points to build up that evil shield. Go from, in terms of pathing, Evil Harvester to Evil Harvester if they can, but Jen pokes out for just a second. Does get beamed there, holding that corner amazingly here, so they're just backing away for right now. Yeah, Zero pops the Rolling Thunder there. Uh, too much damage, wants to make sure that they've uh, definitely got time to reset. Uh, they just actually popped into the circle quickly to get the scan over at Lava Fissure. So you can just see on the mini-map there, Dark Zero do have zone info uh, for zone 3. Do they want to use that to try and push in on the north side of staging, or do they go through the landslide tunnel? I guess we'll see here at the moment. Looks like they're hunting for blood. Green being right in front of them. Sykes popping the shield bat. Currently, the way that Krim is playing is a little spread out. Two of them on the right side. Zero and Jen try to swing on them. Sykes is still playing behind to make sure that the one member that's behind them from Cream cannot take a different off angle. He gets right back onto the high ground. But this fight is taking quite some time. Teams like Eternal, who are playing more by the edge, still by Mirage Etoile, may try to take some poke damage if they have the weapons for it. Jen's still holding that head glitch by the hilltop, but none of these two teams are trying to fully engage just yet. There hasn't really been an opening opportunity yet with the circle closing in two. Nope, still 60 players. A lot of damage coming out, but uh, only the resources are being bled as Sykes goes down too soon. And elevate, this is exactly the wrong time. They can't even... Oh, I don't know if they're going to get out of this. I think Elevator probably going to come in off the other side. And Dark Zero might just get sandwiched here. Yeah, they're, they're Dark Zero losing out on that third right at that moment. With Elevate coming in from the Monument Tunnel is just unfortunate timing there. We'll have to see. And feeds, they do drop as we did say goodbye to one of our first teams already. 19 squads left, though, with Ring 2 closing in. LG are holding onto this high ground. A good spot to be in without being in the chaos of the teams that are trying to fight for the train tracks, but do have to look behind them for the teams that may late rotate from Thermal Station or Eternal that are still in Mirage that are shooting at them. It was Complexity that went down first, actually, so... A little bit unfortunate. I've been seeing such great highlights from them in recent weeks. Very exciting team to watch. Care package right at LG's feet. Oh, they got the evocation. Massive. I like how they give it to Sweet here too. Stay in the fight a lot longer to provide those smokes. Native Gaming playing right underneath the team. Boat checks everywhere. Oh, Lux40 gets deleted though. The follow up after the initial Nemesis hit into the hemlock from Zainu. Seeing your feet, Dark Zero, the second team to get eliminated after their win in that last game. Now going out second to last. Rambo's trying to fight for his life here too, trying to restabilize. 
Clayton is at least inside the circle, but with that team above him, there's no way where they could find their way right back to Clayton. Circle actually shifts to the one similar that we saw earlier today, Vicky, where... Who's that team on the hill? Uh, let's set up the Watson fences in one. Over by the hill sign? Yeah. Think about the hill that exits out of Harvester by that tunnel. If you do sit, sit up on that hillside early on in a circle like this, it could be risky if you have the Cossack. With the Watson, it could come in clutch, especially with the Creeping Barrage. But I'm thinking that hillside south of the Vault Tunnel exiting out of Landslide here, where the circle is going to be pulling, so many teams are going to be playing by the edge. It's TSM that are in Grandma's house outside of staging for this next pool. As you can see, the minimap on your top left screen. While Temper do get involved in this fight, no Mirage here. Sorry, Mirage enjoyers, but we do have a Gold Devo in their hands. So let's see what they could cook up with this and the Mozem with the Digi. So looking right through the smokes, a nice little swap up here. Yeah, that's fun. A lot of people obviously going for the Havoc these days. Not so much love for the Devo anymore. Uh, it used to be, yeah, if you, uh, you know, picked up the turbocharger, you were generally looking for a Devo in, uh, in years past, but, uh, it's certainly changed around now with the Nemesis coming through and then, and the Vault, and, you know, these days you'd have to say the, the Devo is probably the least used energy weapon. You usually see people opting more for, so for that Havoc and stuff. I love it, gaming, moving into the tunnels themselves. Talking about the Havoc. Full of mag, that turbo ready to go from Zach. Activates Beast of the Hunt to start engaging on a fight here. Let's jump into a listening real quick while they engage on this fight with Elevate Gaming. Hold that, hold that. I'm probably getting third in. Look at the front of the turbo. We're safe here, we're safe here, we're safe here. We're in zone, we're in zone, we're in zone. Yeah. We're shot, we're shot. Hold on, give me Watson. No. We'll walk out, we'll walk out. If we get a medkit, we can wrap. We can wrap if we get a lot of medkits. How many is a lot, bro? We're not wrapping, there's no way. I can bang all, but it's gonna the gen is gonna take some of the The gen is on height. Do we have You have bang all, right? Yeah, I have bang all. I'm gonna pop a Phoenix. Is it a full three out there? Is it yes, it is, it is, it's full three. I only have one med kit as all my white meds too. I have two med Alright, we need to figure out we need to identify their comp. I'm pretty sure they're Watson, not Caustic. Yeah, it's Watson. Yeah. It's only two, bro. It's only two. two. It's we should go on white left. Love the comms calling out how many mechas they have. They're gonna already start rotating right now. I love it, gaming. They got the scan originally. They know exactly where they are on the high ground here. On that little slight lip of the hill. Zach though gets beamed by the Havoc. He has to avoid the Rolling Thunder by an inch. He's able to pop this shield bat. Trying to play off the bins. So many nades that they've had to chacha slide around. And they do lose out one just playing off the lip of that hill. Zap on the other side. Skirt who have been holding on to this high ground. And they can't do anything here. Oh my, wait. Huh? I was with just the about to say, yeah, I was like, the gen looked like it was, uh, you know, making them invulnerable uh. up there, but somehow a nade sneaks past and knocks them. That, I've never seen that before. Uh, Scurry gets deleted right afterwards. And as they, and they lose you, the fight no. because of it. No way, after they had the advantage originally, too. Wow. That's definitely something they're, uh, they're gonna be looking at again. GKS, moving on, rotating from Thermal, fighting Optic Gaming right in front of them. Sends out the Cossack Bureau, eating it as far as he can. One of the perks that Cossack comes into play here in Season 20. Chaotic, though, gets beamed by the team, shooting from Harvester. Saucer is going to go down next. Stay naughty with not enough health. Phase looking on. This is the issue fighting uphill in a position like this. Your backs were all out in the open. No smoke could help you here. As Phase were able to take the shots that they need and opt to come out on top. Now trying to rotate. So many different bullets flying through the air in every different direction towards Optic as they get to cover. Phase will be in inside the building in Harvester though. Very happy with that ape gang. They've got dropping gaming above them, Oblivion as well. I don't like their chances of making it to the next ring. I 
many teams here still playing off that low ground while dropped in gaming as a solo playing for their life here in the Cossack barrels getting set up right above their head it's oblivion on this high ground here they're the only team on this train tracks. Underneath them, there's no other team that would be out in the open in front of TSM. They do clean up that one last straggler. With a Kraber in hand, can Blinker do it? He's just standing Aye. still free with the 140 here. Can he get the follow-up? No, he can't. He's getting shot at from up front. So Oblivion, I mean, look, if the circle was shifting towards them, they'd, uh, you know, they'd be in God's spot, but instead, it's actually quite a rough rotate here from them. They might have to go through TSM. TSM are in that front, in that house in front of them, where the respawn beacon is. They've been waiting there for quite a while, actually. Uh, you know, what have they done with it to this point? Uh, they picked up one kill so far, so this next stage is really going to uh, kind of tell us if if this play has been worth it. And looking at Sadline, he's only got 32 bullets in that nemesis that eats up that energy ammo. Takes care of that barrel. He's going to have to rely on the hemlock if he's got heavy suit here. They lose out on Yubin. Hits a beam, gets a double knock. Only one left from E8. Oh, but there's no follow-up. He did so much with the limited ammo that he had in that nemesis. I cannot clutch. Zap stays alive for E8 with the circle closing in right behind everyone who was playing on the edge. Optic now having to play off that low ground. TSM meeting him back in the canyon. It's only up to reps here. Yeah, I think he won't be much longer for this, honestly. Lots of teams looking at him. Eight gang around. Elevate got a full reset after that. Okay. They've actually sort of rushed into their next position, though, and it's been taken out. And now SSG off the high ground are looking to run away with this one. Eight gang it down the bottom. There's a small chance that they can put out some big damage and, and take out SSG, but this is really theirs to lose. SSG are just going to hang out on this high ground. Game-winning position here for SSG. It's just about cleaning up the stragglers of what is left, preventing the teams from rotating over to the side if they can, while still holding onto the bridge. Even with the smokes just blocking some of that vision, it's not going to be enough with these nades getting tossed out by SSG. It's only Ape Gang on the low ground. Our last two squads left here between Ape Gang and Space Station. How can they possibly win out on this one when they're taking so much damage from above. SSG is back and they're here to stay here with phony has got that Nox gas. I can go bit on the attachments department looking at the vault, but it's fine here. Zainu is just putting in so much pressure with the hemlock, but I specifically love the positioning that they're holding no matter what. Different angles here. Wingman shots ringing on though. Phony's forced to pop at shield cell, shield bat rather. 10 kills for the team so far. SSG has had a banger game. And now they look to close it out and add another few to their tally. Huge W here for SSG. It's just a matter of time. They drop down, they clean up Bercy, and they take the dub. In a spot like that, you can guarantee that Space Station will win in God's spot. And there's that hilltop, too, that we were talking about for End Circle Genome. And SSG timed that rotate to sit down on that hilltop with some perfect timing to prevent themselves from getting pinched from the teams rotating from Harvester. Yeah, I really like how SSG played that one. And uh, yeah, just like it happened in Amiya, the team who controls that heal does take the win. The Yeah, again, disparity in high ground um, often is, is really what decides a final circle in Apex Legends. And you need to identify that at the correct time and make that rotation at the correct time to capitalize. And with a lack of horizon in the lobby, you don't have that gravity nope. lift to try to get up until the high ground for free. And even then, it's, it's very linear. You know exactly where everyone's going to be coming out of, even if they do try to split off after coming at the apex of that gravity lift. But it is nice to note, aside from that dub from SSG, they made that rotate from Climatizer to be in that spot over by the side of Harvester. So they were able to wrap around basically the entire map to get into that spot with the timing that they had presented it. 
Yeah, I, I guess uh, with a lot of the lobby going towards like staging and whatnot, it did open up uh, some spots over towards Harvester on that side. And as a result, they match Dark Zero's efforts from game two here and walk away with 25 points. 13 KP for our game winning team once again. Eight gang right below them with nine KP. Most of that came from all the chaos that went down earlier on from staging, the teams that were playing through the canyon. Looking at TSM, they do secure two KP. They're playing that rather patiently. We did see them go for an early rotate onto staging. They stood by the train tracks for quite a little bit of time before they managed to just wait patiently inside Grandma's house on the outskirts of those train tracks closer to staging. Looking all the way to the bottom, LG did secure eight KP. Elevate with 10 it was unfortunate on that rotate through that tunnel side of that circle that they were taken up by the teams that were exiting out of staging but a lot of kp shared between our top 10 teams here tsm played it quite safe that game and honestly reps did uh, very well to eke out that top three considering you know we saw what a precarious position they were in towards the top five or six when they had to drop down uh once again we're not really seeing a lot of teams down uh the bottom here pick up a lot of points and this has been this was something i said at the start of uh, my casting day almost, I don't know, 24 hours ago now, Vicky, um, which was uh, something that I'm seeing in season 20 that I think could be a little bit of a trend here. Um, and that's that we don't see as many teams picking up a lot of KP uh, and not placement points, right? So we are going to see a bit of a dearth of points in this bottom 10 because you no longer have um teams coming with you know red armors crafting on the edge and then rolling in and being able to bully other teams the uh uh yeah you, you just can't do that anymore and, that, and that's what we were talking about earlier on in the day too, Genome. You know, we, we, we're, we're not seeing, unless it's a contest, we're not really getting too many uh, early or mid-game engagements because of, you know, running into people on a rotation. So it's just not happening right now. Everyone's playing a little bit safer, so it's taking a little bit longer to get those KP in the match. But we are now at the halftime portion of the show, which means we're going to bring in a guest this time around to chat with us. Very excited to get We The People, a.k.a. Peeps, in the show with us welcome it's uh, ignoring the christmas tree it's lovely to have you here how have you been peeps lovely uh nothing wrong <laughs> with a little christmas spirit you know any time of the year uh but i'm good how, how you guys doing we are fantastic and i have a little bit of a fun question for you because we heard rain dan and mark talking about it yesterday and considering the first time i ever got to cast you playing was when you were playing gibraltar i have a gibby question okay purple level yes. perk for gibby what are you picking uh i think it depends on if if we're talking comp i think it depends on the play style of the team so it, I, I think that's one of the greatest things about season 20 is that they, you know, brought in the perks and it sort of allows you to change your play style a little bit. Uh, so huge shout out to the devs for, you know, revamping Apex and making it feel like a brand new game, but still not taking away what makes Apex Apex. So still, so still no answer. Nobody knows what we're picking for, for Gibby. Is it the baby bubble or the bubble bunker? No answer yet. Uh, we don't know. The baby bubble does put in work, let me tell you. So I might I might have to go with that. That's usually the better option. Okay. I'll take it. Look, if everyone could fit in the oh, bubble, yeah. we're safe. We're safe. And we just get the bubble even faster. All right, peeps. Gonna take you down comp lane here, looking at the different, we're talking about a different legend in this play. Looking at NA and the other regions that we've been exposed to so far that have been able to play on the season 20 patch for Pro League. We're seeing lots of Caustic, we're seeing a lots of Crypto and Lifeline in Amia. We're seeing the Valkyrie get put into play. Are you thinking that Valkyrie is gonna stay in NA or are we just going to toss out uh, NA late game Skyward dives into dying true combos? Or uh, how do you think some of these metas are gonna evolve looking at the other regions and looking how NA is trying to utilize uh, more of the Valkyrie approach? Uh, the good old days, you know, popping a Valkyrie and just praying and hoping that nobody's in the building. And if they are, you gotta, you gotta fight to the death. Uh, but no, I think Valk, um, 
she just offers a get out of jail free card, which is, you know, tremendous, especially if you can't find any evacs. Um, and the great thing about the Valko, you can't shoot it out. You know, if you hit your shots and you knock somebody, that's great. But, you know, with the evacs, it's so easy to shoot out, especially if you're surrounded by teams. That thing is going down in the blink of an eye. Um, I think we will see more Valks coming closer to LAN. Uh, you know, it just depends on people's play styles. Uh, right now, again, with the perk system and all these, um, you know, updated legends, it allows for a lot of play styles. Like you said, we're seeing cryptos. We're seeing a lot of Cossacks come back, you know, just for the defensive capability. But not only that, Cossacks, phenomenal for offense you know you push in a building you throw the caustic all you throw a couple barrels it's great to reset with uh bangalore um my favorite is so good as well because you could smoke los is it's great for resets it's great for offense great for defense um but we are seeing a lot of a lot of different metas which again is something so fresh so refreshing from season 20 um and we're seeing a little bit of lifeline as well. You know, now that they sort of changed up the shields a little bit, um, the ability to get, you know, the Evo harvester from a, a pack or a weapon is insane. It's a game changer. I, I find it funny how uh, you say there's a, you know, a get out of jail free card with the Valk there. Because I feel like 50% of the time, uh, you know, you're straight back in jail uh, with how that ends up. But look, anyway, um, I, I want to take you through some of the final circles uh, we've seen today, peeps, uh, and get your expert pred opinion uh, on what went down at the end of games one, two, and three. So here in match one this is the one we had over a countdown uh where we had this year come out it was an interesting final circle always always a fun time with the countdown zones it's always a mess there's so many uh places where you can get shot from which which make it really tough as you just saw um that caustic trying to get a caustic alt on this team here and just got absolutely clipped for it for free uh but i i think in these end circles Doing less is doing more. Um, you know, sometimes <laughs> just staying in the shadows and just letting the game play out a little bit uh, actually rewards you a heck of a lot more than just trying to go for the KP and, you know, just swinging it. But um, great dub here from Native. Um, you gotta love it. Mm. Yeah, it was uh, a solid one from them. Now we see Dark Zero. Uh, I mean, E8. This <laughs> watching them try to climb up, man. I barely laughed so hard in a cast in my life. Um, but then it really all came down to the final 3v3, right? Between Dark Zero and then Oxygen. Why don't you walk us through that one? Uh, another tough zone here. Again, so many places where you could get shot from. Um, phenomenal, phenomenal game from DZ. I mean, these guys are just looking unstoppable. I was looking at their KD. They have like a six point something KD and the next highest is like a four, you know? Uh, but I think Oxygen, what they needed to do was be a lot more reactive to that and get ready to third party that a heck of a lot quicker. Uh, very unfortunate, you know, Oxygen is right on the cusp of qualifying um, and Vayne is my old roommate. I want to see him ball out and have a good time at LAN. Uh, so I need these guys to lock it in and, uh, you know, make it to LAN. <laughs> Look, I think they're in a very good spot to do that. Uh, they might not have won that game, but they're still looking phenomenal. And then we had game three here where we see SSG just dominate from the high ground. I mean, game number three here, you you know, SSG basically got served this dub on a, a silver platter here on the end zone, the, the 3v3. Uh, they're literally stuck between a, a rock and a hard place here. Uh, nearly impossible to climb out without a horizon. So it was just a, a waiting game and just, just counting the points up. And uh, great play here from Zainu, just going down there, making sure locks down that KP and uh, on to the next, you know? It does feel like Zionu's gone from strength to strength, honestly. Uh, you know, such a phenomenal player being able to pick up, uh, pick up a trophy with DZ uh, last year, and, and SSG certainly seems to be using him to his full potential now.
Absolutely. All right, people, I mean, if we could he's... keep you here forever with us, we would, but we have to continue on with the matches. Obviously, thank you so much for jumping on here and chatting. We'll see you again soon. Sounds good. Thank you, guys. Love you all. All right. Bye. All right. We'll take a look at the series results now. Once again, a huge thank you to Peeps. We, we love and miss him very much here on the show, but now we're taking a look at our series results where everyone is standing right now. And after that last performance, SSG squeak into that top position net with 39 points. And you see a little bit of a point gap because Dark Zero struggled in that last match here, Genome. But is everything still really close? Yeah, DZ were, I think they dropped in either 19th or, or, or 20th place, something like that. So yeah, as you say, they um, have struggled to get up. SSG now on top, uh, mainly off the back of their placement points. But, uh, you know, a 25 point game is nothing to sneeze at here. LG have been sort of just trying to creep their way up little bit by little bit. Uh, Native gaming, again, one big game for them. Um, and yeah, that's kind of my take on it. Vicky, anybody else that jumps out at you before we continue on with our matches? Looking at TSM sitting in that 10th place spot, they usually have those pop-off performances on Stormpoint. And since that is the map that we're going to transition to next, I can't wait to see how that's going to play out here. LG starting off a little rough, but still being able to ramp up in the last two games specifically. And then looking on the other side, GKS, we highlighted this team as one of the teams to usually come out in top four, top five on World's Edge. Now, not having that successful story this time around. So we have to see if they really did figure Stormpoint out in the way that we heard them say in the interview during the pre-show now it's all things on the table for both these teams that were highlighted good point good point well you mentioned it we've got storm point right around the corner which means gino it's time for your break yet again go take maybe a second nap and we'll see you back here in just a little bit while vicky and i start getting into our storm point action the map is changing so will the outcomes we've had a pretty good day here so far but now anyone that was struggling and i'm thinking specifically eec because we saw where they were on those standings they have that contest in world's edge are they going to be able to get some points on the board now that they don't have to go up against the like of the likes of temper in countdown looking at storm point it's just so crazy to see the performance from EEC yesterday into today. It's, it's unfortunate that a lot of these other teams, though, have been able to figure out what they needed to do differently, and an EEC has fallen behind. Now, as we go into Storm Point, you could see where these teams are going to be landing in their POI. You mentioned, you know, seeing some of these 50-50s going down, Cenote Cave, looking at Skirt and Cream, Temper and Phase over by Wall. That's something that's been going down for quite some time. EEC could try to rotate quickly from North Pad and try to third party that quickly through the Dragon Ball uh -huh. Z buildings up the zip line towards Wall through the Armory. And to see how this is going to play out, because we have seen a lot of Southern Zones um, on Storm Point, but I like to see how, even looking at World's Edge and earlier today with Amiya, how a lot of these zones have been shifting and having a nice little different pool even one like lightning rod so as we get set up here and the lobby gets loaded in let's take a look at the legend select i'm not listening to temper by the way they are not going mirage they keep getting <laughs> everyone's hopes up just to tear it down when they load into the lobby it, i feel like it's got to happen once right like like just I don't believe because it. <laughs> everyone's waiting with bated breath for it to happen i mean i'm also keeping my eyes on native gaming looks like they're sticking with the seer for storm point as well it's not. It's it. it we're not changing here, Vicky. It's nice and oh. interesting to see still how the the Cossacks is also still sticking onto Stormpoint. We're seeing this time and time again, and we're getting started, guys. Game number four here on Stormpoint. Our first game on Stormpoint. Can some of these teams stay consistent? Space Station coming out on top with a pretty hefty game three and the dub. The Dark Zero falling really early in that third game has set them behind. Storm Point could be their time to shine as we take a look at TSM and where they're going to be landing before we transition over to the 50-50s that we're going to experience on this map. Yeah, and I believe it's probably DZ's worst finish so far, which is insane considering just how strong they've been here in this entire split. But you were wondering about that 50-50. Temper has got to be feeling a little bit extra confident after winning the entire time on World's Edge. So now you see them here against FaZe, trying to see if they can make something happen at the wall. And like you said, there is an opportunity for your EEC to then maybe third party try and clean this up. But right now, FaZe and Temper just doing some poke damage back and forth, playing a little bit safe and healing those shields back up. 
And the difference here is Conduit being put back into this composition. When it comes to 50-50s, comes in clutch. You get those temporary shields so that way you could re-engage in a fight without downtime coming into play with you having to pop a shield cell instead. But temper maintaining onto the high ground and the smoke still providing them the extra coverage that they could work with while FaZe tries to creep forward still sets FaZe at a disadvantage just in terms of positioning until they can get an angle. We'll see how long they allow this to go on for as well. As they start to get all of that additional information coming through, they'll know where the Evo Harvesters are, if they have to change their pathing at all, moving through to the zone as that pops up as well. So there's gonna be lots of options here for them to handle this situation, but it looks like FaZe wanna make the decision for them as they put push up onto Temper at the top of the roof. What a push. They trade here between Snipe Down getting spades, Phase is incredibly low, but Snipe Down comes dropping down. All he needs is a triple take and a dream. Adrivan is going to be able to try to pop this shield that right behind the doors. Going in, though, he gets the crack. He gets the finish. Phase gets eliminated right after he pops the bat. It's the ego check shooting at the death box with the flat line coming in clutch. They're just better. I know those comps are going crazy. The tactical crouching right after finishing off that fight. <laughs> Listen, we said that Temper might be feeling a little bit good after winning their contest on World's Edge. Definitely have to feel even better after taking out FaZe. EEC, that team we said could potentially push in from the Western side going through the wall. Now that they know where the zone is, that's exactly what they're gonna be doing. So potentially we'll come across Temper along the way. And we can also see where there's Evo Harvesters are, where these teams are all starting to rotate in. Oblivion looking comfortable right now in Command Center. Everybody else trying to move in from that Northern side. Obviously TSM uh, at Lightning Rod and LG at Zeus Station both very, very comfy, but every time these teams are close to where these zones are, we have to remember how much this changes with EVOs and how they function. They have to find another way to make sure their shields are gonna be leveled up. I love how you point that out because then when you find the circle pooling in your direction, yes, you have the positioning advantage because that's your POI, you're looted up, you know where to sit, but you have to imagine with the evil harvesters being spread out across the map after you see them 40 oh, seconds into where that first circle is shown, you're denying yourself the opportunity to get that extra 350 EVO uh, points towards your EVO shield. And then you need those uh, passives to come in, those perks to really help you out. Temper is looking great when it comes to the EVO shields here. You see Spades already has purple. He's got the wingman ready here too because they had a care pack land right on top of them. They do have a ring call to behind them, but no legends that they have that could scan it. And you can see all of those points breaks down, breakdowns there on the side of the screen as we check back in with Complexity. A team who started off slaying pretty heavy in the first match of the day. They were looking pretty strong on Worlds. I struggled a little bit in the last match, but have looked really strong considering they're also working with a little bit of a different roster right now, trying to take that balloon up. See if they could utilize the heights to their advantage and try and gain a little bit of high ground here. Evac Tower gave them at least some time to work with. That was huge. And you don't need a gravity lift. You just got the Evac Tower instead. Evac Tower doing what Valkyrie and what Horizon could kind of help you with here when it comes to trying to take onto the height, but still very risky trying to get themselves out of the line of sight of not just TSM, but the teams over to their side. So many teams have already rotated up by Lightning Rod. LG playing much more by the edge, closer to the Trident. Still trying to avoid TSM who are taking some shots at them from the building inside of Lightning Rod. This is going to be pulling more south though, probably in between Stormcatcher to Lightning Rod here. We're going to have to see how TSM may try to navigate into that next building without getting shot by the squads that have already taken control of the building inside. Yeah, not a lot of safe space for our teams to work with so that real estate was very precious as we're still trying to see how complexity want to handle this situation here they've got a few teams in the line of sights of monsoon sentinel we saw how much work he was able to put in with that in previous matches unable to connect this time around but also at least scaring off those teams in the distance from looking their way and allowing them to have a little bit more movement on this rooftop that 4x8 could be a little finicky at times here. Spades coming in from the skies. He tries to push in, misses some of those initial wingman shots. 
Carter's trying to get away oh. too. It's cloaked. He follows up though. They lose it on spades here, but leaving them so low originally before going in for the follow up. It's a trade. Playing outside the cost of gas. Even giving up some of the high ground. It's fine here. Trying to take this fight over by the Prowlers versus EEC. Cloak tries to climb up, gets the crack, and gets the follow up. I love how they held two different angles to get that last knock, cleaning them up as they continue on their top nation, but they need to be stopped. Look at Cloaked. Temper is having too much of a fun time here, but they're feeling that confidence, and that's exactly what you need when it comes to looking at where this next circle is pulling. I mean, EEC cannot catch a break when it comes to running into Temper now. Temper has that entire north side pretty much to themselves. It'll give them a little bit of an opportunity to reset and then choose how they'd like to make this next rotation into the zone. As you can see, pretty much everybody else has tried to move in and find some space to hold for now as we're checking in on some of our squads who are just on the outskirts of the zone, one of them being native. They were trying to push through, run into a squad in that choke, opt to then rotate a little bit wider and longer as they currently have the time to do that as long as they make that a quick choice and this will potentially offer them a little bit more opportunity to maybe run into a bin or get a scan if they can on something and continue even up those shields and sticking to the seer here too something to keep in mind yeah. with everybody else running the bloodhound you're gonna have the exhibit ready for you when you start engaging on a lot more of these fights where you're just gonna be seeing bangler smoke caustic gas everywhere do you want to go to the Prowler? So that is the objective here for Native. They're cycling around the map, not only going for those evil harvesters, but taking care of the Prowlers, which gives you extra evil points. Aside from that, you can imagine the Flyers that they've been able to take down here, all the mini objectives that build up into the later game plan that you have here for those purple evos. Now checking in with Cream, another one of our squads that's going for a little bit of a slower rotate. I think that was actually the squad that was holding off the choke that Native was trying to push through. So now they're still finding themselves safe for at least this next ring collapse, but on the edge and will have to push through some teams as well as potentially try to maybe gatekeep Native still if they were keeping tabs of where they could potentially be coming as they were moving through the map. But for now, they've at least got a little bit of space as those pings are coming through and Cream decides how they want to handle this. Completely gatekeeping that south side so far. Native Gaming are going to be making the rotate. Yep, you can see right around the corner. There is an evil shield diff, though, going into this fight. You see Yubin, another teammate back there with the blue evo. Let's jump into a listen in with Native Gaming to see how they approach this fight here downhill. I'm coming, Evo. I'm coming. I've struck you. I've struck you out. Look, 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 look. I'm going to bring him out in there. Bring him out. We can wrap. 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 The edge of that, that nut is in. Okay, yeah. listen, listen. The team, if there's a team at nut, they're gonna hear that. So they're gonna be expecting it too. So we need to be ready to fight if we need to. And I don't have Vanguard either, and I have no smokes right now. I have two ultic right. cells. I have two ultic cells. No, we don't really have time to pop them. Out we don't have, yeah, we don't have time. Okay. Tap your guns out. Nothing. They evac, the team evac, the team evac. We should Pretty go sure. back then. Shouldn't we? Um, well, do, do we should just full commit to this. I don't, I don't see anybody know it. I don't see anybody know it. Okay, I'm walking up with you. We're good for now. Nothing in nut. You should go in nut and set it up because it's in. Just okay. for now. There could be a team holding these buildings. There. there 100% is. I heard a fight there earlier. Okay. I'm looking at it. I don't see anything. Okay, I'm walking up this way. I'm walking up this way with you. You want me to come? Uh, just chill for now. You're caustic. I don't, yeah, I don't see anybody in that building. The engagement doesn't come in from native, but the smart rotates definitely do. Seeing that they were playing at a disadvantage in terms of positioning, they decide to wrap around. That building was safe for them as well, so they are now going to be able to clear up that right side of where that circle is going to be pulling. The Dark Zero, specifically Zero, getting knocked first here in this fight. Gets the scan, see the team playing on the inside with the Watson fences. Sykes, though, with huge damage, gets a double crack, and then Jen Burden clears away to help clear out whoever is left. One last straggler up on the high ground. He's incredibly low. We saw him get cracked originally, and that is a cleanup. Sykes with that damage, enabling Jen to come in for the flank.
That was a beautiful pinch on behalf of DZ. Straight out of the listen in and into the fire. I mean, they'll also give themselves space now. They own that building. They've got those death boxes for extra loot and they can continue making a slow rotate here on this edge. Meanwhile, you've got Skirt finding themselves in the crosshairs of Native, taking a lot of damage. Albrelletly low, but able to at least get that shield back up to where it needs to be. Beast of the Hunt popped as well to try and give a little bit of information towards skirt but it looks like native don't want to push it on this they know there's other squads in the area as well and could potentially catch themselves out if they try to get a little greedy go for those kills so instead once again another conservative and really smart play that we've been seeing all game so far out of native oh man that gravity cannon that's a that's a little I scary too soon <laughs> <laughs> They just have, they just have to prove you. They have to they have to make you feel something, prove you wrong a little bit on that low ground here, but they managed to survive and they don't fully commit to that platform. And they are going to be playing off this low ground. The only thing about that low ground though is that there's so many different angles you could get shot from. Oxygen Esports engaging in this fight, popping beast of the hunt, looking right through those smokes. Gets rid of those caustic traps. They have that slight high ground here. No climbing allowed. It's a squad that's trying to fight their way from the bottom hill. It's going to be Cream right below Oxygen, but Oblivion are looking at this fight from the side, waiting for these knocks to happen so that way they can come in the third party. Nice nade from Reeds. Gets that knock to Yup in here. Now Oxygen have the advantage, but they're not trying to overcommit. They know that there's a team over to the right. Well, Peace was hoping that OXG, Vayne, and Co. were able to do well for themselves right now, finding themselves in a serious back and forth. You've got Skirt below. You've got Cream in the area. Uh, they're trying to fend off so many teams. They're now down to a duo. Vayne and Reed's trying to hold everybody off. This is where that Caustic is going to come in so huge, trying to use the gas and at least keep those squads zoned off of them for now to give enough time to get that shield bat popped, maybe hit that res. Meanwhile, Oblivion actually providing a little bit of a distraction here. Oh my god, that was disgusting. All right, little drag scope quick enough to get that heady. Blinks here now, dancing with the PK. No disruptors on here, but still gonna be able to take on to height. Can he get another one with the Kraber? Looking, the team still are trying to hide the 95. Just enough here, Oxygen. Get eliminated. 11 squads left and Oblivion are feasting on those death boxes. Out of nowhere, they just showed up with a Kraber and melted everyone. At that, while that was all happening, Skirt went down. Uh, oh, actually went down. There was another team that was over there that went to Cream. It was Cream that went down as well. Oblivion come out on top in a four-way fight, and now they own that whole southern edge of this ring. It's not safe. They're going to have to continue pushing north. However, they don't have to worry about any teams around them right now except for everybody that's managing to hold this building. And this same building is the one that's been packed since the beginning, Vicky, we talked about how early those teams rotated in and tried to get some space to hold for themselves. Somehow, Native took the grab cannon and wasn't punished for it when they opted to stay low. They've managed to stay alive now. Nobody else really wanting to step out and take that fight if they don't absolutely have to. But I'm just going to say it. The one team in the best spot right now is TSM. The circle is pulling right on top of the lightning rod building. And LG is not having the time of their lives right now. They lose out on Sweet, and the only makeshift cover that they have right now is the lip of the wall in front of them and those caustic barrels. They get the shield swap real quick, they get the banner, but deeper into Lightning Rod, it's gonna be Dark Zero. So LG having to play this out as a duo. TSM know this, not trying to overextend though. They don't wanna give up this building space for the teams that are looking at them like native on that low ground here. duo first slayer was down last match funk was down now sweet is down and they've managed to at least make some crazy things happen even with just the two of them they are right next to tsm like you pointed out so it's going to be a little bit more difficult but maybe they can play this safe enough and kind of use this edge and hope that the other teams cause the distraction to give them enough time to stay alive as i say that it looks like they want to make their move in right now before all of that kicks off perfectly timed because now they can 
Oh, hold the oh, first dead. floor, but instead they decide to just push in and instantly get a knock here, Vicky. Wait, the ghost of Sweet whispering in Funt and Slayer's ears right now to push on the crack that they had initially onto Verhos right before Verhos tried to restabilize. He was trying to block out the door and could not get away in time. And with no suppressed fire, they get that knock, but they can't get the finish. Probably gets the reset right above high ground. TSM are not going to be leaving that spot, but with them holding onto that building for so long, there's probably still rocking all full blue Evos. So that's going to be detrimental into this final fight. Massive play, massive play out of LG because now they can just kind of coexist for a little while. You know TSM won't want to do anything too crazy. They'll try to be annoying, but those caustic barrels will give LG a little bit of breathing room. Now back on board with Oblivion. The team who managed to push everybody out of the way have also moved into the building that five or six other teams were holding. They're using those fences on the low ground to try and keep everybody away. The Nen will use that bangle to see if they can clear out some space above them. They've got Optic in the area, Native in the area, and eventually we'll have to fight. Dancing around, creeping barrage before now pushing in, closing in the gap. The smoke nades to provide some extra cover. Look at the watch and gen up on the high ground. A team playing right above TSM. Over five to six teams have now made this quick rotate with the circle closing in right behind their backs. It is absolute chaos here as CSM have tried to fight for their lives. Nate at their feet. Arc started to beat reps on the other side. Furholz is one. How goes out and TSM are back in the lobby. Nine squads left here. They take control over that building. LG is still alive on that first floor. I don't know what timeline we're in right now, but some TSM go out and Native had a free push across until Oblivion started looking their way. Native took zero damage, making their way across the road. Oblivion, though, ended that run, but then they get taken out. And now we are down to just a few remaining squads. We've got one rat, I think, in Temper, still able to stay up for the squad and get them some placement points. But DZ looking to try and see if they can close this one out. They're the only team that's on the northern side of this zone right now, so they're able to watch everything go down around them, picking up that evac tower too, in case they end up needing that height late game for that final circle. This is a really solid spot for DZ. Looking at like the two, three creeping barrages, all the caustic Nox gases saying that does not look like my business whatsoever. And this is a team, Dark Zero specifically, that had rotated from Mill all the way to the north side of Lightning Rod, where all the fighting is still gonna go down inside of this building. Once the circle starts closing in, DZ have at least a little bit of cover on that bridge, but once they have to get out from underneath that lip side that the bridge cover provides, they're gonna be out in the open, but they could take advantage of all the teams fighting each other to close in that gap. And hopefully they'll be they'll be able to do that. They have like the slightest advantage because the final circle shifted just a little bit towards them. But as we say that, they make an early move in, waiting to see who's gonna be pushing out of this building. Zero now up top, taking some shots onto Retsy, doing some damage as we see Dan trying to push in. Everybody's starting to collapse, and DZ don't wait for it. They make the first move. They now own the top of this building. King of the Hill now. Five squads left here. DZ on top, Complexity dropped in LG. They get the finisher onto Lou. LG get eliminated, but they stayed alive as a duel to the very end here for the top five. Zero trying to take a different off angle. It's Ape Gang also as a solo still on the other side of Lightning Rod. If DZ could try to clean that up, but they're not gonna be giving up this high ground, especially with the way that they're holding the different positioning, blocking off the front side. Whoop. Potential res here. With no gold knock. Oh. All right. Solo going down. Not even the final shots could finish him off. It ends up being the ring. Dropped in gaming coming in from the front door. It's going to be Dark Zero right above him. Complexity as a two man. I think Complexity Ooh. can even get out of these doors. Might as a side time. DZ are just continuously harassing them from. Sends out that thermite. Blocking out their entryway. Evac tower going up. Circle closing in, though. The nades being super huge here. Cork, so what? DZ dropped down. They're alive and they're healthy. And it's just a matter of time before DZ redeemed themselves after being the second to last team to go out in that last game. DZ take the game on Storm Point with two dubs in their pocket.
Okay, that was insane. The amount of throwables they had to harass everybody on the floors below them to make sure that nobody could even try to peek and do a sky nated return nothing there was no opportunity for the teams below to try and damage dz or do anything to push them off of that tower i mean you had drop in gaming busy trying to get a res that actually they were able to stick but then still had to fight with everybody else trying to push out that was so patiently and well played by DZ. I, they made it look easy, Vicky. The comms and the timing from zero to take onto the high ground was everything. It's like what you mentioned. They were also able to get the loot that was right there on top, waiting for them if they needed any extra needs, if they didn't have it already. Well, they had it available to them right there. All that damage coming out, not only being on the higher ground, but also looking around them to make sure complexity had no way to escape. They were stuck in that room, and even if they walked out, Zero was watching at a different angle to make sure that they were going to get beamed. So DZ knew the only team that they had to worry about was a team that was going to walk out the front doors of the building right below them, and they already took so much pressure. Also, were struggling to try to reset from the initial uh, spawn to when they were trying to get them back up and with no gold gold knock you don't have extra health to really work with there too yeah that that was there was a lot going on there but a really really strong performance out of dz not surprising with just how strong dz's been all season but we've got to shout out temper as well down there in sixth place 12 kills as they just continue to roll through people on their rotation into the zone and out of it actually had the most kills in the lobby with eight out of those 12 vicky that was a massive game for temper wow. You saw that they were having fun too. The synergy on temper is just next level and that's why they take every fight with confidence. 13 KP for Dark Zero. Jen Burden having the most damage in the lobby with 1,800. So a lot of the follow-ups coming in perfectly, even looking at Oblivion with 8 KP as they were holding down the fort right there by the south building of Lightning Rod. But Looking all the way down, even to Space Station with 2 KP, the team that just won game number three with 13 KP. Looking on the other side of the page, TSM going down in 11th after they knew where that circle was going to be pulling. They could not hold that building. That's the reason why Dark Zero didn't want to fight for that building early. They knew that they were in a much better position once that circle was going to close in behind them. Even if they weren't in that next circle, they knew the rest of the lobby was going to do the work for them. Meanwhile, even when there's no contest, Eternal still struggling as they ran into Temper yet again, and they fell to Temper yet again. So we'll have to see what they are able to figure out in the last two matches here on Storm Points. We take a look at the stats from our top three squads in this last match. Not surprising to see complexity up here with what we've gotten out of the squad so far here today. Monsoon has just been unbearable, but look at the equality on DZ. Look at how almost identical those stats are across the board, Vicky. Wow. Even with Jen doing the most damage in the lobby, look how close Sykes and Zero are back to back. The follow-ups have just been fantastic for this team. And how cohesive and con honestly consistent. It's still that consistency. I keep repeating mm. that because that's just the highlight here for a team like Dark Zero staying on top. Now looking at the overall standing so far for the day, EEC at the very bottom. So is Skirt. TSM still in that 11th place spot after the first three games on World's Edge. Now after that first game here on Storm Point are finding the kills, but unfortunately going down without the placement points that they're looking for. Yeah, and you can see just how close, I mean, three, four, and five are as well. Everyone tied at 34 points right now. Two more matches on the day. And every single point is going to start counting because every single placement matters. As after today, there's only two more match days left before we hit those regional finals. I don't know how or where the time has gone, but some of these teams only have one more match day after today. So really have to start to try and pick things up, get a little bit of a, a disparity in the points there so we can see how this region is going to shake out. But NA is always, it's always a close region, so I'm not surprised when it comes to those numbers. But we still have two more matches on the day. If you are hanging out with us and watching, you need to be getting your Twitch drops as well, okay? Because this is something we always have for you guys. This time, it's hollow sprays all season.
season long. And you'll notice that these drops are changing every two weeks. And you can tune into any Apex Legends Twitch stream with the drops enabled to earn these holo sprays. Obviously, make sure you keep coming back to get every single different one because they are very cool. And then you end up with six when it is all said and done. But like we said, two more matches left on the day, which means for us, it's time for another short break. And when we return, match number five coming at you. Welcome back, everyone. Vicky Kitty joined with Genome. And while Genome was sitting out taking a break, he was working some black magic to have Dark Zero come out on top again. How do you do it, Genome? Keep doing it once again. <laughs> and what a chaotic final circle that was, Genome. Uh, it was good, wasn't it? I mean, DZ, they wrapped all the way around the back. There was just like a sliver in uh, back where that sort of gravity cannon was. They worked their way around uh, and then played in the uh, under the bridge for a little while. And then all of a sudden, I don't know, they just had the high ground somehow. It, I, look, I don't know, man. Things keep working out for them. They keep getting 25-point games. And if you keep doing that, it's kind of hard to beat them. It's crazy and honestly for you guys watching at home if you guys think that the apex action ends today well you can't be more wrong because we have the EMEA and NA Challenger Circuit Finals tomorrow starting at 7 p.m. CEST kicking off with our very own Dia and Graceful for EMEA and then NA at 6 p.m. Pacific time with Tom and TMT Church. So definitely make sure you check it out at twitch.tv slash versus underscore GG. And of course, a huge thank you to our friends over at versus GG for putting that stream on for us. A lot of action here, do you know? Non-stop Apex action here to enjoy season 20 chaos. And we're not done here ourselves. And hey, we got match number five next on Storm Point. DZ has taken two games now, one on World's Edge, one on Storm Point. I mean, can they secure an extra dub and some extra mm. points? We're gonna have to see here. Once again, we got a team on the hook for the bonus points. This time it is Dark Zero, as you said. So now that we're into Storm Point, uh, Vicky, uh, you know, yeah, look, any of these uh, picks that you find interesting? Wait, is that serious? Do we have a No, no, it's not. Temper? It's not. It's not. They're trolling. He does this all the time. He's been doing it the last four times, too. I wish it was. I wish we got to see the Mirage. Imagine the amount of clones that the Bloodhounds would be scanning every time he gets the refresh. If someone uh, deletes one of his clones or they hit uh, one of his clones. But no, no, no. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the Mirage main is trolling, and there is not going to be a Mirage. We'll probably see the Horizon, maybe. Unfortunate. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's Bang Horizon Bloodhound to Tempa. Um, but what we do see right. consistently from that team, though, Genome, is the same 50-50 happening over here by Walt. True, true, true. 
We actually did see a Mirage earlier in Apex South, but uh, it was it was for a, a solo team, so I don't know if it really counts. <laughs> That's rough. Okay. Right, getting set up now here too. I, I swear we had some of the most, you know, uh, contests out of wall of any POI. Yeah, and it's been, it was back and forth at the very beginning, and now even with going the conduit for these 50-50s, it just, it's just not working out for FaZe, and Temper has just so much confidence. Obviously, the synergy is there. I want to jump into an early listening with FaZe to see how they want to map this out when it comes to approaching this fight. I'm charged up on Mozambique, so I need fucking something. Car. Havoc on Christ. I'm I'm I don't want any of those. Okay. I'm getting roof of this building. We need to have a maker for someone. I don't see the evac thing. They're, they're on our building, old building. Can we get yeah, that move? Or can we get that? They're gonna grab it right now. I mean, I can look for it. They got it. They might move up off this. They're right here. They're running. They're running. They're running. Okay. I think. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm moving up then. I'm moving up then. Yeah, he dropped on, on the roof. On me. I can't do I'm here. Okay. They scan. One dropped, one dropped. I'm very near. I'm running left, I'm running left, I'm running left. left. I'm, running I'm here with you, I'm here with you. I'm queuing up the height. Roof. I'm getting roof. Okay. I have height. I have height as well. They're gonna horizon as well. No Q. I'm here. 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 Inside, inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm on the door. I'm on the door. I killed. Killed one. I'm here. I'm here. I'm on the left. I'm on the left. He's just I'm chasing left. this guy, I'm chasing this guy. Bang, or bud, bud one, bud one. They're fine, they're fine, they're fine. Nice job. Nice job. My PK did the bug, by the way. That's sick. That was cool. <laughs> like, our, like bro, now. what the fuck? Went to shoot that guy and it just goes, careful for another team. The sense of relief with FaZe taking the 50-50 the second time around for the day. Hear them talking about the outcome from their weapons here. Now, as they get to finally loot, hopefully no third parties in the area, as we know that EEC likes to rotate quickly to the wall. But luckily for FaZe, they do have some time to breathe. Complexity were approaching a team that was hiding inside of this building right here, or rather looting instead. And Native Gaming now getting involved in a fight. Rambo falls incredibly low. Clayton has to get away. He's one here and elevate or the team to get eliminated. They come out on top. You're looking at Native after having a pretty great game last game. Ooh, nice pickup there from native uh you know claim is a fan of the rat plays so i've heard Vicky. <laughs> and someone really needs to call an exterminator with the amount of rat plays we've been seeing so far in today sweet got that little tick with the smoke nade gets right to the care pack beams with the havoc doesn't even need the turbo or the stock to put even put in that damage gets that knock right afterwards Forget the care pack. Gonna capitalize off of this KP here instead. Tries to get the finish here. Two teammates playing inside the building. With Sweet knowing that, they do get the finish. More teams now rolling up here inside of these two buildings on the outskirts of Cascade. Being able to see so many of these other teams now try to fight for the spot. This is where the circle is gonna be pulling more so in that middle area building where Launchpad is. And <laughs> Optic Gaming, no strangers to this party. The Burrow does get eaten by the Watson Gen GKS, get eliminated in the feeds. 16 squads left already with this first ring starting to close. Yeah, Optic Gaming are fighting for that position, uh, you know, in the top 12. They're not currently there, but. They need to win these crucial fights if they want to push their way up further. So that's a good first step. Considering the fact that Optic was in 14th, I believe, right before, or right, yeah, right before this game specifically, yep. they definitely need to have these pop-off moments if they could clean up that KP inside of those two buildings uh, as LG, not gonna be able to rotate. Meanwhile, all the way up by Mill, in the respawn beacon, it sounds like somebody was able to just get res. AK can get eliminated in the feeds, and Dark Zero was zero down. Jen Burton and Sykes once again holding hands, shoulder to shoulder, to find this team below them. What is going on here? How did this fight even happen? I mean, someone must have pushed someone very early, because Dark Zero usually quite fast on the rotate here. Sykes 
will put down Carter, and I think it's now a 1v1. Oh. oh no, two. Still two Huge. up for EEC. Ah, oh, but that might not be all, because Cream, um, they heard all this from Down Beast, and they said, hey, well, let's get a piece of the pie. Now cleaning up what is left of that team. EEC get eliminated. It's the back and forth that we keep seeing from DZ. I don't know if they're just feeling that you're on the mic right now, Genome. Every time you're trying to cover their action out here, but fortunately, DZ fall rather early after taking a big dub in that last game. Still sitting pretty comfortably on the top end of the leaderboard. Yeah, look, I mean, you know, you're pulling out 25 point games every other game. Yeah, you right. You can almost afford to, uh, <laughs> to go down early. Uh, in between them. Wow, that is kind of crazy. We round one is closing, and we have twelve teams left. Yeah, the teams are dropping like flies, and it's the I call it the game five chaos. I love game fives because this is the point where a lot of teams see where they're at in the overall standings and how much points that they need to get. So some teams start kicking it up and start playing incredibly aggressive, even if it could cost them, depending on where they stand and how confident they're feeling. We're seeing that too with the team still playing on the outside, looking at FaZe. Cream who had went in for the third party there too. They're going to be able to take an evac tower, but they were able to also get the evil harvester that was right to their south originally. So now as they approach through that south side, all the teams that are inside those buildings on the outskirts of Cascade may have to rotate towards that rock mass that's to the south side. We've seen final circles pull in that direction. Yeah, it looks like very much it is going to be a mid-map finish here. Probably somewhere down along the river between Jurassic and mid-map. Oxygen Esports have had a banger day so far. And because they start down on that south side, they are going to... Uh, be in a great position for this. They've moved over from Barometer. And they'll be able to, you know, just try and hold their backs down there at Jurassic and slowly walk it in. Native Gaming. They're holding the uh, the Spider Cave, or not the Spider Cave, just the, the cave, I guess, um, to the north of Jurassic. Again, still on that Seer. I mean, hey, last time Seer made... Uh, waves in the meta, Vicky. It was one team. It was one team that made everyone else see the light until he became one of the most oppressive characters in Apex Legends competitive history. On release here was an actual menace in his own tier. And Firgo definitely took advantage of that during their prime. Not Seeing all. maybe different legends creep up, though, into the strength of how these individual players take advantage of it, but also how it works cohesively with the rest of the team and how they're also taking advantage of the passives. The perks, rather, is sweet. See the pings coming in right in front of him. He's got the creeping barrage ready, but just getting some extra loot. You can imagine that they probably went already for that evil harvester that's on that mini-map. CSM's just waiting for this care pack to land on their feet. Care package over there. They're currently within round four circle. They don't know it yet, but as you say, with a good chance that this care pack contains an Evo cache, chance to insta upgrade your armor, big deal at this point in the game. 12 squads left though. The game has definitely slowed down with the second circle closing in. The only team not in that circle right now is FaZe, and they're currently flying in from an evac tower. And they're taking their time going from Evil Harvester to Evil Harvester, so that way they can get even closer to Red Evos. And with a Wingman in Snipe Down's hand, they're finally able to put those points on the board like they need. Rotating throw, though, through Cascade means that they're going to meet up with a lot of the teams that were playing out on the outskirts of the building by Cascade, thinking about Optic that we saw before, Complexity, and then approaching right behind Oblivion, where they're actually were looking at LG before they took that zipline building right to the south. Well, I think we're just going to get a very quiet period here, Vicky, because we've had such a a wild 
bloodthirsty early game that there's frankly quite a bit of space. There's a lot of space for a lot of these teams to play off of. FaZe did get that knock onto Oblivion though, so now Oblivion lose out on their third and they called him out for being separated too because he wasn't inside that building as you saw on the map right here. With two of the members of Obli Oblivion playing inside the building over to the north side, FaZe now could capitalize off of this as a three-man. But if they do try to send this, they know that there's so many other teams in the area having to finish that fight just as quickly as they try to start it. Yeah, there are a few, but, you know, considering they have to go further out of the zone to take part in this fight, I think LG is the only one really close enough to make that worth their while. And they're actually pressuring them from the outskirts here too, not even trying to overcommit. It's only one member left here for Oblivion. Faze is cleaning up kills on their rotate here. Trying to get some shots here. He's literally one. He can't get away and slide down in time. And that's going to be the final kill. Going in favor for Optic. Talk about the points, and they definitely need it here. So any bit counts. Skirt being another one of those teams. Sitting in last place right now with only four points. We can cruise over here. Jurassic still got a few teams home to it. Native Gaming still in the tunnel. Oxygen still playing down by the survey beacon. Not sure if they've used it yet or not. And then Cream also up the top. So Gaming Gladiators, they're the ones holding uh, to the left of where Klain is looking right now. Let us go there. And uh, yeah, they'll just they'll just sort of sit along that fence line and, and try and poke out at Cream and Oxygen um, as they're required to push in. And Native are just trying to scan right now to work out because um, they are going to have to leave that bunker, Vicky, and, and work out, uh, you know, which way is the best way towards the next ring. So they're actually going from the phase side of things. So they exit out of the bunker doors, exiting towards closer to the Cascade. And LG looking ahead with the bow check in hand. Could actually clean up some KP here in the middle of that fight. Native trying to play around the smokes here. Wingman and Snipe Down Sound still holding on to this. Gets the crack immediately right afterwards. See that they also all have blue here. This is where the evil shield advantage comes into play. The Seer exhibit was called in, but FaZe is just going to navigate away. They see themselves getting pinched by a team over to the side. That's going to be Optic Gaming trying to take some shots at them. But if Optic turn their backs and the team's still behind them, that's going to be LG that could come in for the fourth party. And every angle, they are getting shot. It is Monsoon who takes that knock onto Snipe Down. Oh, it's a tough one here. Complexity just lined up for the shooting gallery popping out from the windows of that building. Native did take a knock with their backs to the edge of the circle now. It's a short walk in for them. FaZe gets eliminated completely. Again, Monsoon with the Sentinel showing his proficiency on the Sniper, one of the only players in all of ALGS at the moment that gets value out of that weapon, let alone that class of weapon. Actually crazy how consistent he is with it. Every single time we see that Sentinel in Monsoon's hand. For Horse now, after seeing that scan, sees at the top end is clear, so taking a high ground advantage. Slayer literally won before he gets right back inside of the building. Escaping the G7 push as LG want to take advantage here too. No doors to block out from their line of sight from the squads outside. Minus just the smoke, they lose out on Funk. He's got the creeping barrage ready here, but it's about trying to reset and avoid so many of these nades. He's definitely got the evil shield swaps in front of him here too. But it's Verholst who's trying to get into an angle. LG's right underneath the team. I believe it's Optic Gaming that are taking that fight to them while Complexity are neighboring the building next to them here as TSM. Make the outer circle rotate. Sitting in a good spot to avoid getting pinched by these other teams. Yeah, sure. They've got about 30 seconds to find a new spot in the zone now. And, you know, Optic, you can see them scanning and, and spotting out Native who are trying to move in. Uh, but TSM are probably going to have to try and dislodge Skirt ahead of them. They want to find a playable spot here. Most of the buildings will be gone after this ring closes. And then you've got all these teams down on the other side. As we said, Gaming Gladiators just uh, 
pretty much erecting a gauntlet for teams wanting to come out of uh wanting to come out of jurassic cream they're strong enough to break through it and are able to get the reset too with no other team in the area to try to contest and prevent the reset from happening complexity as a duo here Monsoon seeing the team right in front of him. Misses some of those L-Star Sharks, but he was literally one up the gaming. Gets sent back to the lobby. Seven squads left, and Monsoon is popping off. Ten kills shared between the entire team, and most of those coming from the Sentinel. Crazy result there. Ooh, Lux has managed to get his hands on a wingman, and has uh, caused some problems for Oxygen, who had managed to run past out of... Jurassic and actually find a spot very close to the final circle. Now TSM also have made their way through, but they're in a little bit of a tussle with SSG here. And while they find themselves now pinched in the middle of that rotate, looking behind them, if they take this fight against SSG, they're incredibly low. The trade comes in. Frex finishes off Hal. Verholz gets sent down. It's only up to reps from TSM to either restabilize or try to go into a different position, but looking across the river, it's going to be Oxygen. Oh, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. He's tap strafing. He is moving. Happy Feet calling him early, though. He manages to escape just for now. I don't even know how he's alive. He's literally one shot. Look at that health. Circle closing in, and Space Station are looking to clean up what's left of reps, but they have to look behind them first. It's complexity rotating from the Circle Monsoon, jumping into Pony's arms. Okay, Monsoon. He's gonna fall now, but SSG not necessarily doing any better. Okay, they do get complexity here, but is it too late, Vicky, with 20 seconds yeah. left on this round? They're going to have to run past Reps, who's causing problems for them. He teams up with Oxygen, and all of a sudden, SSG down to 50 health, done for. TSM, I got it called out earlier, too, with the circle closing in. LG still alive, just leaving Sweet here, playing by the lip of the hill. Here's the res happening above him, but he can't even do anything about it. The moment he climbs, he gets beamed by two other teams that have him in his line of sight. They get eliminated. Our final three squads here. Oxygen Esports, Cream, and Native Gaming. Native? The only full squad left alive, so they pull up on the back here of Oxygen, and they're sandwiching them between uh, themselves and Cream. Now the duo of Cream have to try and pull out something massive to win the game. Native looking to take another game in their pockets for the day, taking the gravity lift up. So Creeping Barrage was called in, Rambo. Wants to tail them from behind. But with a three-man team getting the damage advantage here, they get one knock and the second one is put in the coffin as Native Gaming take their second game here for game number five. Incredible effort, especially uh, considering a team who hasn't had all that much time to practice together, let alone to practice these new and exciting comps. I mean, you know, they don't even have the data to go off, Vicky. I don't think there's a lot of teams out there who have been trying Seer out. So, interesting. I haven't seen any other team uh, trying out Seer in place for Bloodhound. It's mostly been the Bloodhound because of those scans where you could get them mm. consistently thanks to the perks too. You get to keep them highlighted for longer. Seer can keep enemies highlighted for longer too, but the only team to be running the Seer and finding success right now after taking game one and now game five. Wow. Uh, yeah, two wins for them. Two wins for Dark Zero as well. So uh, a couple of teams really running away with it here uh, in our NA lobby. Yeah, and that means that in the final game, there is an opportunity for two teams that have gotten already two dubs for the day to potentially get yep. an extra point on the board for the overall region standings. It's gonna be interesting to see here. I wanna see how this last map played out though, because we saw a lot of teams go down while the first circle was closing in. Yeah, like eight? It was a lot. It was, it, we have a basically 12 squads going into that second ring. It did slow down a bit, which is something that usually happens once a lot of these teams do find their positioning mm -hmm. with the Cossacks settled up inside of these buildings. But in that first circle, it was just chaos for a lot of teams, even playing outside the circle so far away from where that circle was going to initially start pulling. 
Yeah, I mean, you rarely see that many teams go down that early, but, uh, you know, here's the result of that. You're, you're getting native. Uh, 22 points for them. Cream, not someone we've seen at the, uh, the top of the scoreboards all that much. Um, pull out a 19, and even complexity down there with 10 kills. Cream been putting on the numbers on the board that they need here. They were in 16th place overall before this game and settling up in second place with 10 KP is a nice look here for this team. Oxygen still within the conversation, still sticking within the top three, top four teams that we've been seeing end up in this lobby. TSM still very little KP here, not playing as kill heavy, aggressive, mostly playing to rotate and to play for a final circle pool. So they're denying themselves a lot more of this evil shield charge, but the KP, even though they do get six, it's not really in the cards for them. Meanwhile, complexity monsoon we saw in the feed going crazy with that sentinel. Yeah, he picking up quite a few kills with that one. And so we got phase down here, five kills for them, obviously three of them coming from that early contest that they are, I believe sitting one and one here on this, uh, this little group of storm point games we've got going. Uh, another couple of kills coming for our lower down team. Eight gang, I think, uh, you know, a team that have shown some promise today, but uh, only three points here for match four, five, five. Match five. I mean, that also means that we only got one more match to go for most of these teams on the bottom end of the overall standings for the day to get those points necessary so that way they don't have to sweat so hard for the final day that they have to play because we are down to the wire now, Genome. Dark Zero, yes, getting 14th, but they have taken such two heavy dubs at the process of it in phase. Even with the 5kp, couldn't find themselves with those placement points. Taking a look at the total series results now, seeing where everybody is situated in after that fifth game. Here to see. Give us a, a much better idea. Okay, Dark Zero on top. Crazy that uh, out of uh, the five games we've seen, 50 out of those 55 points are from two games. Yeah. Especially since Dark Zero in the in games that we have seen them fall early, it's like the second squad to go out or so. Yeah. Now being able to still hold up on top with 55 points, but with those early exits, Genome, Space Station are right behind them with 52 points. This final game could determine if Space Station could claim that first place spot over Dark Zero, even with their strong performance right now. Native in third with 22 points. Now looking on the other side though, LG and TSM, respectively in 11th and 12th place. And Optic Gaming, who really need to show up, they're at risk of not making it to land. Which is such a crazy thought when they were literally one team, one fight went away from raising the championship trophy not so long ago. It's crazy how things could change with so many different patches, a different season to come into play and some more Apex to be seen, guys. We got game number six, our final game of the day right after this break. You don't want to miss it.
everybody. Welcome back to the Apex Legends Global Series where we are about to get ready for the final match of our series here today in NA, our last match on Stormpoint. And it has been a really fun day so far. Twice now, Vicky, we've seen a seer come out on top with a win. Who would have thunk? Yeah, you know what's extra funny about that? When I saw the Seer, I had written in our production channel. I'm like, yeah, Bloodhound's still better. And then now Native comes in and takes two dubs. <laughs> put the Seer into play. I do want to highlight, though, their rotates and the timing on the rotates have definitely also come in clutch. Them holding on to the bunker two before they had to rotate away from theirs, get stuck in between two teams and still manage to get out of the chaos was quite impressive while FaZe had fallen in the process of doing something similar and holding the outdoor side of the bunker doors. Game number six, as we take a look at the teams that are picking the legends, are we seeing any changes here? Again, don't be fooled. There is no Mirage. I fell for it once. I'm not letting you guys fall for it either. We do want to see it though. I would be a big fan, especially a team that is known for the Mirage plays like Temper. But this team is definitely putting on a performance. Of course, the 50-50s that we are going to expect going into this final game on Store Point Glitter between phase. It makes me sad. Okay, it makes me sad. One day we're gonna get the Mirage and it's going to be terrifying. He's gonna get a final buff and everyone's gonna realize how terrifying it is to see eight mirages running around and not know what to do. <laughs> Especially with all, all right. the Bloodhound scares. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we're we're going to get into match number six here as our teams are dropping out of the drop ship. We'll see if we get a final contest here as well. It's now one and one. Temper wins the first one. Phase wins the second, although it still was a really good fight in that second. We'll have to see who's able uh... to close out the day. The fact that they try to go for that and then failed, they sped ran their way back to the lobby <laughs> phase with the insurance policy to make sure that Panders is safe. Two, they all really just dropped on that roof on top of Panders and then fell for it. Crazy. All right, phase win another 50 50 back to back against Temper. Last time we're going to see Temper for the day here for this final game. And now we get to see where this circle is going to be taking us as FaZe is going to be feasting on this rotate. Yeah, this is going to be massive for them. Potentially an opportunity for EEC as well to maybe bunker down and get some placement points to close out the day as they struggled on the first half being the team that Temper was up against on World's Edge in the contest and not coming out on top in that. And then having struggled even in the first match here, they tried to rotate into the 50-50 with FaZe and Temper and Temper still took them out. So this is an opportunity for EEC to maybe at least close out the day with some points on the board as you can see which of the remaining Remaining teams right outside of this circle. This will potentially favor native gaming. Also looking pretty set up, not only because of their position here, Vicky, but because of all of the resources surrounding them that could level up those Evos. That's a really good point, especially when it comes to the pathing and having to either go for the beacon scans, the prowler nests, the flyers, even the Evo harvesters, of course, to get that 350 extra points towards your Evo. We can see so many of these other teams changing those that, that pathing approach that they otherwise would have gone for when it came to playing into those final circle positions or the edge, depending on the comps that they were running. Gaming Gladiators, you can see the pings coming in. When we're running with those white evos, probably pinging to see if they could find an evo harvester themselves. And playing inside the DBZ buildings, it's gonna be native. Calling out again, the positioning that they always take when they have that ring console information. I don't want to jinx anything, but this could be a <laughs> solid <laughs> opportunity, okay, for Native, who have now managed to get a win on each map. GKS, though, flying in, wanting to get involved in this engagement, seeing what they can bring to the table, maybe pushing Native out of the way. LG sitting in the wings, as is Oblivion. But GKS just really want to hold down one of these buildings. Everyone's going to be fighting for this position here, Vicky. It's going to be so chaotic, too. I mean, if some of these teams don't have a watch and Jen is tossing Nox grenades everywhere. 
Ape Gang being one of the teams rocking the Watson, the Devo, the Turbo, and a Purple Energy Mag feasting on that. Trying to look at the other teams now making the rotate in though. McLovin with the 30-30 shots, trying to take some shots at Bursty while Dark Zero in the distance creeping their way over after exiting out of mill. Complexity here on their rotate. Trying to see what they can do here. Honestly, they were a team that has just been so slay heavy today that I was wondering to see if they could close out the day with a win. Finding themselves here pretty comfortably evoed up, getting the alerts. They did get stand, scanned by that beacon with Lou kind of doing some scouting for the squad. But complexity, if they could close out the day with a win, I feel like that'd be a nice feather in their cap on their performance here today especially with a slightly altered roster. Oh, says out the creeping barrage right before they got in that corner, though. Looking to try to engage, it looks like, as we take a look at TSM engaging themselves with a team creeping up right behind them. Verfos getting called up for trying to go to the Evil Harvester. Did they just wrap by the Evil Harvester and just wait, or did they just approach the Evil Harvester at the same time? We just tuned in. The creeping barrage, great timing, just to give Verhols some space and time to reset. I don't know how Verhuls just got out of that with negative health to his name, okay? Somehow surviving, able to also get a reset and TSM can keep themselves in a much, much better spot. SSG also opting to back off and just continue with their rotation through Command Center. Now checking in with OXG though, finding themselves in a back and forth here in Jurassic with DNO trying to push their way through here and see if they can maybe avoid an unnecessary back and forth and really look to see to get some more Evo points on those shields now with E8 and Skirt back and forth. These teams are starting to have to fight so early for this positioning here and Elevate is down to two. They take out Skirt, clearing out this space. They're now getting themselves a little bit of loot and damage on the board here as well, but they don't want to sit here for too long. Especially not here by checkpoint. At least luckily for them, though, there are no other teams in the area that could go in for a third party, so they could reset nicely. And if they haven't scanned that server beacon already by checkpoint, they definitely can now. Dark Zero creeping in wait. You can see a player, EEC, on the other side of, the, of that rock while they go inside of the bunker. Let's jump into a listening with Dark Zero as they approach this fight. I cracked him, I cracked him! Coming, coming, coming! I'm with you! My game is just lagged. I'm anything, anything! I got him. Help! Crack him on! Fire, watch him! Let's reload! What? No, I'm dead. Oh, fuck! No, no, no. What? Bro. Oh, God. It's like you've got to go out the back door yeah, when he stuns fight. them. That's smart, though, anyway. Oh, the fight approach from Dark Zero gets shut down and the entire squad gets wiped out. Gloving stays alive before Cream now comes in for the third party to clean up what is left of this team. EEC putting on a performance right now at the very end when they desperately need it. But Cream now just trying to put a stop to it. That was a really, really impressive fight against DZ. It opens up the door for a perfect third party opportunity with not too much that EEC can do about it. Cream taking their time here though with this. Unsure if they really want to try and make a concerted push inside to clear out EEC, but they've got to know they've got this advantage. They finally make their move and they lose one more. McLovin going down for EEC. Cream just needs to clean up the final solo and they'll have owned this portion of the zone. A little bit of a chase ensuing here. <laughs> not wanting to make it easy on Cream. And they are also not going to let Carter to escape here, though, because that would just not, it simply wouldn't do in the last match of the day here. Vicky, Cream, clear out EEC. And knowing that DZ's out of the lobby, or, you know, that's, that's got to at least feel good. The fact that EEC, I'm still not over it, like, beat one that yeah, fight like what? With, the, with the evil shield disadvantage. They were all on blues while DZ had all purples. Man, that's a replay. EEC out of the lobby. SSG make the rotate. 
Exiting out right through Cascade Falls. FaZe right on top of their heads, though, looking at them on the roof of the building. Look at FaZe was trying to go for a survey beacon there, so they were able to get notice on the teams around the area. SSG in the middle of this rotate, we're actually going for the ring console here at Cascade, and they're pretty safe here as there are no other teams on the south side of the zone. SSG honestly had really set themselves up well when they decided to not take that engagement earlier so now we're just kind of checking in with them as they make this rotation through like you said they're clear on this south side right now so they're okay for now but they are heading towards a zone that forces them into two choke options in order to get to where they want to go that are and then a wall of teams all of whom have moved here early enough to claim these buildings whether it's the nut buildings or the ones that are on the southern side close to those chokes so it's going to be a potentially difficult road for any of these teams who are coming in late on these rotations to try and make a safe passage through to the next area especially the teams that have to rotate through the chokes on that south side too even though they're building to the north you imagine that through the windows uh the teams that have already found themselves in these buildings dropped in gaming ape gang even complexity playing on the outskirts by the rock could put themselves in a pinching position here for the other teams to come in from the north side once that next circle closes because this circle would probably be pulling more down to the south Closer to the bunker doors, closer where TSM is actually stationed in, in between where that bunker is and where Ape Gang is. I've seen circles like that. We used to see circles when they pulled in this direction, pulled by the water where there was no cover to work with minus the armory and a little bit of the DBZ circle buildings over to the right side that you see native in. And yep, it is pulling up to that north side. Optic Gaming sitting pretty comfy in that armory. Now we've seen a situation like this just a little while ago with TSM where they had a really prime position here in the final circle and disaster struck. So we'll have to see how everything's handled this time around. Although this is a, a, a messy final circle that all of these squads should be very familiar with and how to handle it and play it. It'll be a great way to close out the day as we're starting to watch SSG make their their choice on how they're going to start pushing their way through and it will be a situation where they'll potentially be running into Oxygen Esports. They tried to do a little bit of a slower wider rotate see if they could maybe get a little bit more of their shields leveled up before they had to make this push through one of these chokes. And you can tell all of these pings coming down knowing that it could be a little bit messy. But it's gonna have to happen here soon. Was that Frex with the dead zone on his controller? <laughs> just looking around while pinging and it was just moving around. I like the pings though. They also do have the skyward dive if they find themselves in a pinch in that rotate because where they have to navigate through with oxygen gatekeeping and face having the high ground. It'd be a little tricky here. Similar case here for Elevate as they take their evac tower going right over the hilltop from checkpoint. They're looking down below. The reason why the Beast of the Hunt was popped while taking that evac tower was so that way you're basically a makeshift Valkyrie ult using the Valkyrie passive, except everyone's highlighted for you because you're Bloodhound. And they're trying to land on top of the armory and they land right in front of Optic. Ooh. Taking this fight is way so risky. You're literally going to get shot by everybody in the lobby. The smoke nades providing at least a little bit of time to breathe. Creeping Barrage coming in, but they have to take this fight versus Optic. They scan only two, so they see that it's potentially a duo, but I do believe Optic is a full three-man. Not only do they have to take this fight, but they have to make it happen quickly because like you said, everyone's going to be looking their way. And if there is an opportunity to get an easy third party here and clear a couple of these squads out, that's exactly what they're going to do. You can see full three on Optic. Like you said, Vicky, now peeking out the door. As that happens, we're getting more squads. Native Gaming having to move in, looking towards Oblivion as the zone is starting to shrink, trying to find a little bit more cover there. Safe for now, but Optic lose dropped. He is not. They are able to stick the res. Lots happening here between all of these teams. I cannot believe they were able to stay up, and now Complexity find themselves in a bit of a fight. 
What a way to take advantage of an opportunity for complexity. They were out in the open. They see the team flying in and come into third party. Coming in right behind here. Monsoon still up and alive and healthy. Lose out of this fight for now as Red Sea also gets taken down. Find two knocked from Optic. One last lever here for Optic, and he is running around looking lost. Can't find the last one here as Complexity have taken over the armory. That was a massive push. Retsy going to need to see if he can put some work in on those Evo shields now. But like you said, it was a prime opportunity that they kind of had to try and push for because now they've gained a really solid position. They're safe inside the next ring, and all they have to do is keep the squads on the outside, which are now so much fewer away from their position. One of those teams they are looking at is FaZe, who is making a very late rotation coming in, but don't forget there's still everybody else in those buildings that are on the south side that were holding their posi position. You've got Drop-In Gaming, you've got Ape Gang, and you have OXG here in this choke trying to push in. All right, well, Oxygen. we've got Oxygen waiting in the wings, so let's jump in for a quick listen in and see how they want to handle this push through the choke. Just trust me, just trust me on this one. I think we're gonna land here, probably. Alright. Yeah, I'm gonna Let me smoke up, and I'm gonna pop dog. Yeah, we might be here. fighting. We're team bunker. Fighting? Team is not here? fighting. Fighting? Team over here? Wait. Can we land here? Land here and smoke up. Land go, here go, and smoke go. up, okay? So what do you mean smoke up? At our feet? Just put smoke, smokes smoke. on us. Put smokes yeah, on yeah, our feet. Yeah, yeah, man. And lay low. Look at Zeebo, look at Zeebo. I'm putting barrels on. Really safe on me, really safe on me. Yeah, I'm moving barrels over here. Three shots over here. This team has to move in. Yeah. Bang. Fucking look cracked. 120 on one, 120 on one. We're gonna have to wipe something. Flash over there. Flash over there. Yeah. 120. I, I we move up on that rock, maybe. Show, show, show. Team on the right. I'm sticking this here. rock. We can still play solo. Is there anything me. behind us? Watch armory. Careful armory. Yeah, armory, armory. Careful armory. Let's, could we play for these kills on me? You want us to move up on it? You want us to move up on it? Are they safe back there? Yeah, they're in. They're in. Look, over here, I'm about to get shot in the ass. I'm part of that. There's a full team right here, shooting at us, shooting at us. Okay. I killed one, I killed one. You should kill. Can you I run? I got Res, 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 res. I'm trying. Just a second, I'm gonna barrel my team. I'm on another guy. I think we wanna go back. Fane, yep. shoot the team that knocked us. I did, I did. No smoke. You need smoke, Fane. I'm your team. I'm putting both Smoking two, okay. smoking two. Okay. Wait for me, I make it. Can we go back? Oxygen had gotten the reset before. They just lost out on Vayne, and they had even done so right after getting that Kraber shot onto one of the members of LG here. Complexity still inside of the armory, and Monsoon is an absolute menace once again with the Sentinel. TSM playing patiently like they have been all day inside of that bunker right below Cream. They do know that they are right there. And since they are neighboring Cream in this next circle, they are gonna have to start rotating. But from what direction is TSM gonna take this? Do they rotate the Cream side? As you can see, you've been looking down his sight here for them, or are they gonna rotate right into the line of sight of complexity? This is, it's, it's, you, you know, you were talking about it during the listening, even after the listening, Vicky, these barrels right now out of these caustics are <laughs> proving to be so useful for all of these teams who have that caustic bang combo between the zoning of the gas and the vision block of the smoke. It's providing a lot of cover for these teams to play in these insanely open areas of this final circle. TSM now making a push in, trying to use the Valkyrie for a little additional damage to force people out, making sure that no one is in front of them and clearing out that space. They're able to move in safely. Meanwhile, DNO down in the kill feed, Native down in the kill feed, Complexity down in the kill feed. We're down to top four, and TSM are using the Beast of the Hunt to give themselves some beautiful vision to start dealing some damage fragging out and i heard the hammies coming out from reps clearing out this entire side of the circle our final three squads tsm lg oxygen esports on the other side Ferroz is going to be able to restabilize but he's holding an off angle here just in case lg try to approach him on the other side Also nice to note that it is only a solo left from Oxygen. Aiden with the wingman in hand, but nobody from TSM or LG can do anything about that. They put down the Moby for now. They thought it was an evac at first. 
Not an evac here. The Moby's just going to provide some extra makeshift cover versus Aiden. Aiden trying to do something similar, although he's already behind cover. I think he's got his teammates' banners. That would actually be crazy if he could pull this off before this circle closes in with the death boxes at his feet. You know, on the on the plus side too, this is one of the first times, final moments here that we're seeing LG as a trio, okay? They are no longer on the back, but the Moby coming through, getting reads in to at least not be that solo rat. I doubt anyone is going to allow this to happen, but the wingman might provide enough damage in the hands of Aiden to deter anybody making a crazy push yet. Yeah, might be safer to just allow that rest to come through and focus on the full trio. They know that it's directly in front of them. TSM and LG right on top of each other on either side of this rock. And it could potentially now come down to OXG taking an opportunity to try and do damage between these two teams. Instead, OXG makes the first move. Oxygen well, tries to contest here. TSM, LG wrapping around the other side of the rock. Not trying to fully commit just yet. TSM knows that it's just a duo from Oxygen. They got the scan originally before the circle started closing in. Taking their time. The barrage coming in. They have the Evil Shield swaps at their feet to the right here too, but they lose out on Slayer from the Rolling Thunder. TSM are on Pride Rock. We're the Kings now. They needed a game to pop off, and they have high advantage. Dropping in with the hammer points, it's the RE45 and TSM taking the final game of the day. You know, TSM were not going to be happy with their performance on the day if they didn't get at least one win to close out this series. And it's something that they definitely needed. You talked about it a lot, Vicky, when we were looking at those overall standings. They were hovering around 10th, 11th. Not bad, just not the type of performance that we know TSM can have. And that win will definitely kind of help to level that out a bit. That was such a crazy end circle. Like, Oxygen's presence was so scary even as a duo there was an opportunity there that unfortunately with the circle being right behind them that they couldn't really play off of the timing and wait for that circle to close in behind lg and tsm first but still it was the threat of a duo griefing one of the teams being a possibility that was there and with tsm and that rolling thunder getting that knock was such a big deal for them to have that advantage because then at that point they know lg wouldn't be able to go for the reset because oxygen would just wrap around right behind them yeah, I, I mean, that was a really strong performance for TSM. An opportunity for LG to try and close that one out as well. Like we had said, that was one of the few times we got to see them in a top three spot or even like a top five where they had a full three up and ready to go. And uh, I'm gonna hype up TSM and LG for that first and second place finish. But Vicky, I cannot take my eyes off complexity Whoa. in fifth place with 15 kills. <laughs> what? I was, I was looking at... I was looking at the feed and the Sentinel, the Sentinel God was at it again. Senti <laughs> shot after Senti shot. I was seeing it, but the fact that they were able to not only gatekeep some of the teams that were trying to force their way over to the southeast side of where that third to last circle had closed in before they left towards the armory to get to the then third party. But after that, that third party also allowed them to not only hold the armory, get the KP that they need, but then nobody was able to contest them beyond that. They were pressuring every single team from the DBZ buildings have, that had to rotate in. They were out in the open. There was little to no cover. They were feasting on half the lobby here with 15 kills. I mean, you don't even need a first place finish if you're going to slay out that hard. They almost matched TSM in total points. They beat LG in total points. That's a massive performance for Complexity. And we'll check the second page, but I don't see too many kills being available considering just how many were absorbed by everybody on that first page phase, though having a nice showing there with six kills to their name. Everybody else, so I just don't think there was much to go around, Vicky. No, it's unfortunate. With face falling down in 11th place again, it's another game where they get the KP, but they don't get the placement that they were looking for here. But overall, still being able to put themselves on the board with Dark Zero falling in 17th place. They still had a good standing, though, showing the fact that they were able to get two great games after they got the dub. All right, well, we'll get Genome back in here to close out the day with us. Thoughts on that last match, Genome? Yeah, look, uh, I 
is it plot armor for TSM? Not yeah, sure. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was well played by them. Uh, it was a very tense standoff um, between them and LG there at the end. It felt like Oxygen maybe was going to sort of prove the difference, but in the end, it was the uh, the Bangalore Ultimate actually getting one of the knocks onto LG, um, which opened the door for TSM to take that one home. Um, yeah, look, interesting that it took them so long to get started. I, I almost want to call it a disguised now because like it, it feels like uh you know they've kind of coined that like have a really slow day and then bring it all back <laughs> in a game six kind of thing i feel you you know do we just name that after them now true true i, I mean great way to close out the day at least for tsm we'll take a look back at all of our final circles though because we had some crazy endings when it came to the storm point side of things going all the way back to match number four and this it might be my favorite match of the day only because of how chaotic this was at the end here dz was the only team that was owning the northern half of this final circle they make an early move to get the top of this building and even though drop in gaming were able to stick some crazy reses there at the end the amount of ordinances that dark zero had in their backpacks to be able to use these to continuously fend everybody off from pushing outside of this building was insane complexity there on the second level drop in gaming on the lower level dz played it so patiently and so perfectly so that by the time they dropped down it was the easiest cleanup of their lives to close out this match i mean huge performance for dz and then heading into match number five here genome talk me through through these these final moments yeah this game you know so we had the the very odd start where uh, you know we only had 12 teams make it past circle one very very strange and then native really starts to pop off in this one uh you know oxygen also being very consistent performer throughout the day um, but as you can see, you know, you've got Rambo. We, we've seen this guy, what he's capable of at land at the highest level. But Luxfordy, the new pickup here who, uh, you know, was, was having some, uh, some issues on meat with, uh, you know, following orders and really um, being playing in a cohesive manner with his team. It hasn't looked like that at all on native gaming. So, uh, you know, whether that's the IGLing here, whether that's just uh, uh, a fresh coat of paint, Native look fantastic today and taking out two dubs is uh, honestly pretty impressive for the NA Pro League. And then of course to close out the day here, Vicky, a nice little Black Sands finish. The chaos between the smokes and the, the caustic barrels, I mean all of it came together in TSM's favor. This is honestly such quality fighting here too for a final circle from every single team that's left, including Oxygen playing that out as a duo and even getting that res at the very end. Again, just providing that extra pressure. Yes, they were forced to escape from the smoke right in front of TSM. They close that out here versus Oxygen, but then the barrage that came in, the bang ult that got that knock onto Slayer was the success story here for TSM. Aside from the fact that they already had the height here, they had high ground advantage, they had number advantage, and that was all from the patient play of them waiting by the bunker and clearing out that entire side of the circle closing in. They cleared out Cream before this too. Reeds was the last one alive before they finally cleaned them up. One piece for TSM, another for LG. I love that they both ended up focusing on that last member of Oxygen right before they, TSM was crowned as a champion at the very end, and they definitely needed that game. You know, I, I was looking at all of these stats and we had such a back and forth day. I mean, sure, Native had two wins on the day, but looking at individual performances as well, we had so many other teams where even if they weren't finishing in first or second, they're ending up with double digit kills that I don't. There's no clear standout winner like we had in EMEA today. When we were done with EMEA, we knew it was going to be at the top of the leaderboard for our series results. I have no idea what is happening now, especially after a 15-kill, sixth-place finish out of complexity to close out the day with TSM and LG getting first and second with decent amount of KP themselves. Uh, I'm excited when we can finally get these scores up here because I need to know who won this Third to last week here. Match day oh number seven. Oh my, my god. god. There is no genome. 
Okay, so you're telling me what? that Monsoon, with 10 kills to his name individually in the last game, has put them on top and <laughs> taken out the 25 overall standing points to win this series. <laughs> what a monster. That's What's crazy is that that's with them getting the bare minimum on World's Edge. This basically all came out with eight kills on World's Edge, right? But this all came from Storm Point in these final three games. This is absolute insanity. Not only that, but Native Ty DZ, both at 55, only one point behind Complexity, who apparently Monsoon said, uh, my back real empty today everybody just climb on in i've got this <laughs> covered okay then, i mean this was i don't even this is fantastic ladies this and gentlemen great the day. sniper rifle <laughs> <laughs> to be fair tsm move up to seventh and now we get to take a look at the regular season standing see how that impacts it dark zero still with a nice comfortable lead but complexity shoot up from what they started in sixth i believe today now second vicky overall that is crazy i cannot believe this dark zero be being the one to take the dub is why they were able to come out on top with those points but it's the fact that complexity came in took that spot by a point diff putting themselves up with 80 points i mean that was one heck of a day for complexity the man with the guitar himself coming in to sing <laughs> us a song and he's singing for the rest of his team to put them up in the overall standings you, you know, all I can think of, Glitter, is uh, <laughs> is when Monsoon uh, was there at LAN with us. As, you know, we have a look at some of these other teams who are very much on the cusp of making it to LAN, like Furia dropped in gaming in Disguised. Um, obviously, some others like Optic and Exit, I think, still definitely have a chance. Native pushing themselves up towards there. Um, but, you know, just thinking about when Monsoon didn't make LAN and, you know, he was on the desk with us and the vibe shift between him then and Monsoon, the sniper monster that we're getting now, is just such a crazy difference and a glow up for a guy who so many people counted out. Absolutely. Listen, Mon, we loved having you on the desk, but we love you even more when you are popping off like this in Apex Legends, okay? We get to see the third and final page here so we can see which squads are really going to need to pick it up. Now, quick reminder, everyone that says series played series play four has two more match days. Obviously, anyone who's on five only has one more opportunity to get enough points to qualify through to the regional finals and then, of course, our playoffs at LAN. We've got to talk about this. It was up in the air until the final moments because I couldn't make a choice. But after what we just saw, when it comes to the MVP of today, it has to be Monsoon. Okay, we cannot let this man close out the day in this type of a fashion with the most insane Sentinel shots that we have seen all day. Even if they weren't getting the team performances that they wanted on World's Edge, still putting in work on the World's Edge performance. He has to be the MVP. He is the vibes leader of the crew, crushing it on his Bangalore. And like we said, we were looking at those overall standings. They were in sixth heading into today, now putting themselves in second behind a DZ, who has honestly been unstoppable until apparently today by one point when Complexity and Monsoon specifically decided to make sure that they remind everybody <laughs> why they are here with the picture, the fabulous pose. I feel like Monsoon has to probably be one of the most fun when it comes to these media day shoots, but look at these stats, guys. Over 5,100 damage, 21 kills, and we talked about that earlier in EMEA. In EMEA, that was the record that we saw today literally and now monsoon's matching that with 21 kills and i could not be more excited to get the man in here himself lounging <laughs> reclining happy with the performance monsoon dude What's welcome good? congratulations hey. <laughs> oh my god thank you so much i i'm 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 shaking right now so thank you Whatever, I need to know what the routine was heading into the performance here today, because whatever you did, you can never change it ever again. 
Listen, we hit, we wake up, we hit the walk, the dog walk, we hit the Pokemon Go <laughs> daily incense, of course. Uh, we come back, we eat yes. a little bit, play some TDMs, meditate, you know what I'm saying? Cast a couple spells, and uh, that's it. That's that's the routine for me right now. I love that. Dude, you guys are mm-hmm. unstoppable. I, I just the, the vibes are massive on that team. I mean, the... Si- I, like who else is as good with the sentinel than you man like i have to hype it up because that's where most of the damage came from like seeing you also like i don't know what's your favorite site on that weapon i need to know i see you using the 4i8 and it, you're just always cracked with it yeah thank you so much oh my god uh i try really hard uh two times <laughs> has to be my favorite 100 percent, and then the six times above all else uh, those are my two, for sure, every single time. And I'm stoked to be able to use it, and I'm glad it's working out, because everybody says it's a bad weapon. Yeah, well, you're a bad weapon, you know, because we're we're <laughs> owning with it. We're hitting shots. It's it's so free, you know what I'm saying? Like, all these guys don't know what to do when they get hit 156 in the face with a freaking charged up Sentinel. So it's good, you know? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it is pretty good. It is pretty good. I mean, like, yeah. uh, the amount of kills coming out of you today, just ridiculous. Uh, but, you know, it was a team effort after all. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. we even saw uh, Retsy coming in today as well. I, I, and yet you still won the day. I mean, how does that happen when you've got, um, oh. you know, Rust Change or, or whatever it is going on here? Um, that's an incredible result, Mon. Dude, it's uh, so thankful for it. You know, I jailing from five different POIs over the course of the entire split and playing with a sub and picking up Lou three days before roster lock has been uh, nothing but difficult. But I mean, we put in the work, we sit in customs, game theory, go over VODs, whatever we need to do to make sure that we're feeling confident. At that point, uh, if it works out, that's fantastic. And it worked out for us here. So Kim's at a wedding right now. Big shout out to Kim. We won this for you, baby. I know he's sloshed right now. I know he's I know he's celebrating and stuff. And uh, I think we're all so ready to go to land we are so ready baby that's how i feel thank you you know we have mentioned that earlier too the fact that you guys are playing with a different roster today just another hurdle that you have to overcome but i want to get your thoughts on season 20 in general clearly it doesn't matter what hurdles are being thrown at you how has this new meta really benefited your squad Man, uh, benefited. Oh, that's a that's an. Uh, I don't know if it has or not. There's still a lot of unsolved things. Uh, it's been a super interesting shakeup to see. You know, Lifeline and Caustic become more relevant, and Watson coming mm. through. Valkyrie is back. Come on! Like a lot of our success in these games and these sets come from the Valk repositioning tool, her ultimate landing in God spots essentially. Uh, and it's been awesome to see the change in it entirely. And we're going to continue putting our heads down and continue trying to figure it out. Uh, and we're feeling good. So momentum is great, and that's it. That's it. All right. Well, Vicky, Vigino, do you have any more questions? Uh, look, okay. So if you're, you were praising the Valkyrie here, obviously it's worked out today. I think one of the mm-hmm. reasons why it started to slip out of the meta previously, right, is it can be a bit of a roll of the dice sometimes. I mean, have you guys, you saying you're doing some work there to try and figure that out. Um, how do you think you can kind of mitigate uh, the the weaknesses of that ult and how, you know, sometimes you can just land in a whole big uh, mess of trouble? Yeah, no, it's really difficult. I mean, it is a coin flip at the end of the day, you know, like if you die going up, take damage flying through, maybe you're not, like it's a skill. It's a whole skill trying to figure out where you're going to land off of the Valkyl. Uh, Some are easier than others, of course, but you know, if you can't have a free spot, then you need to think about how the point A to point B flow amidst chaos goes and whether or not you can pinch a team or whether or not you get on the ground and have a shot at even playing the game because it feels so bad when you land and you just instantly die. And it's like, dang, we should have walked in because at least we could have shot our gun. Uh, and that's the difficult thing with Valkyrie that we all know and love for the last four years. But um, because there's less Valkyries now, it uh, uh, buffs Valk as a whole because nobody has access to the spots that you would with Valk. Uh, so that's going to be like the major factor right now for us is we have access to all of these spots because nobody else has access to them. Uh, so if we see more people playing Valk, then it's going to be a little more difficult. But for right now, it seems pretty good. So, yeah, that's it. Just get used to the game. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, Mon. I want to, I want to let you go so you can enjoy your celebration. But before we do that, I have one final important question. What do we have to do to get another song for another big (laughs) land? 
Apex, on set. Come through, baby. Let's do it. I got some stuff. I would love to. Live performance. Next champs. I don't know. I'm down. I'm always down. I can play. I, let me know. I heard live performance. I, that that hey. was the part I picked up on that. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have said that. Uh, that scares me a lot. I'm down, you know? I'm down. Let's do it. Uh, I all think, right, maybe. Right. We'll see what we can Dancing. work behind can the scenes here, Mom, because that would be epic with obviously with the dancing yep 100 percent. well i appreciate it thanks for having me again you guys are are killing it so appreciate you guys a lot we love you mom. Right, mom we will talk to you later we love you thank you so much and congrats god he is a blast to talk to honestly we wow. probably could have kept him on here for hours uh but he needs to he needs to be able to celebrate a win like that vicky because that was an insane insane performance very well deserved praise on behalf of complexity and monsoon in general uh give me your final thoughts on today and it was insane i am so glad to be back season 20 <laughs> is out in full force and what better way to end the day than complexity by a point difference without taking a single dub taking the game and monsoon having the time of his life with the rest of his team well kimchi is not even at present i know right. they're definitely going to be celebrating later on but man i i can't wait to see more litter it was a fantastic day genome joining us here on both me and na for the first time tell me about your thoughts after you get to see na now in season 20. i mean it's such a a tight group here in NA row. I think that's what makes it so exciting to see three teams within one point of each other at the top of the leaderboard. Uh, that just shows the depth of talent here in NA, right? Uh, you know, I got to watch my boys TZ win a couple of games. Uh, I'm also pretty happy about that. Can't be mad. Uh, and yeah, look, we saw some great highlight clips as well. So uh, yep, had a fantastic time. I uh, hope it's not the only time we get to, uh, you know, see some of the lads back here as they've uh, matured and, and, uh, grown as they've moved overseas and now you brought all sorts of good aussie energy with you here today now we might be done for now in na but you need to remember everybody at home we have another weekend jam-packed with apex legends action less than a week away okay march 9th will be our next match day match day number eight everything kicking off at 10 a.m pt 1 p.m et 6 p.m gmt and it is another dual algs match day weekend for both emia and na and they'll be the last two match days before our regional finals so you have to make sure that you check that out as always though if you miss any of the action here today you can always follow us on social media which will be at play apex esports on x and youtube or at play apex on twitch and that way you won't miss a single second of how the rest of this entire split plays out and uh, now that you've got some time before our next algs packed weekend go play some apex legends okay you can test out everything we've seen here today by some of the pros see if it maybe helps you out a little bit see if you can climb that ranked ladder we'll see you back here next weekend we